All right, guys, we're here with uh, Blake, Chris, Riff, and Ricky, and I'm going to let uh, Riff kind of take the reins on this. Let's give a hand for Blake for being here. Now, anybody who doesn't know our main channel, Pixel Game Squad, there's this person that comes on camera a lot, fiery red phoenix hair. (laughs) You can't tell if he's 14 or a 48-year-old crackhead. (laughs) There's that fine balance of one or the other. We have yet to find out. Blake, how old are you? I'm 21. 21. Let's 21. go. <laughs> Fools me every young single bug. time. Fools me every we, time. We are finally get to have an episode where we don't make fun of Curtis's age. <laughs> that is true. Now we can go on with Blake. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll be fun. Half you guys' age. Blake, why don't you, before we jump in, tell everybody kind of what you collect, what's your thing, just so people kind of get to know you who don't know you before we jump in. Um, So I collect a lot of shirts. I'm mm. getting into more media, but I have been a shirt guy since like... 2018 2019 when they were like 10 15 dollars online and now they're 150 200 dollars shirts which is uh pretty cool because my collection uh skyrocketed in price and has some value yeah, yeah but then you're value. also getting waxed when you buy them now yeah. when sometimes you guys, <laughs> yeah. when you guys did a video at his house oh sorry chris you can go. would you say you were buying shirts in when you were like 15 16 years old is yeah. when you started yeah nice. that's when i started pretty yeah. young but i wasn't reselling them at that point i was uh Everything I was buying was for me. I, I thought they were cool at the time. I was like, I was like, I wonder if there's any vintage Scooby Doo shirts out there. Mm. And I went online, I found some, and I was like, oh, they're like ten dollars, fifteen bucks. Like that's cheaper than a brand new shirt. Might as well Jeez. buy it, buy these. And and then after a time, they like COVID happened and they all skyrocketed yeah. in price. So like, you're fifteen or sixteen. Yeah. So at that point, you only looked like forty two. Yeah. <laughs> only <Okay>. like forty. <laughs> 42. <laughs> no. Uh, speaking of collecting, yeah, kind of what, what we wanted to dive into is it's funny. Like a few maybe weeks ago, months ago, we kind of talked about how come collectors never finish sets. That was like our big conversation. Like you know, people will be like, "I'm collecting the NES set, never finished. Super Nintendo set, never finished. I'm going to do the Genesis set, never finished. Whatever it may be." And I think it like struck a chord. With Ricky and I, because our old show was the NES Pursuit, we were like, I feel like some of the first people in the retro game scene that were like, let's get every NES game. Oh, yeah. That was our show. And it was like 2012. That was early game hunting. But we never did it. And we make fun of it all the time. Like, ah, you don't need to do it. Need to do that, that and that, this and that. But then when we talk, sometimes at night, there'd be like that pause, like, hmm, like we never finished it. That really, and some, it like almost like struck something in us like, let's start collecting the NES set again, like relaunch like our passion with like, I feel like when a lot of people do things on YouTube, like collecting a set, there's so many rules they set for themselves. Like I can only use this budget or I can do this, or I need to get only these type of games. Ricky and I are like any NES game that we don't have that we don't see, we want to buy from now on, no matter what. This includes stadium events. This includes the Pan Asian games. This includes the Color Dreams games. This includes any set bootlegs, yep. bootlegs in the backyard of Mexico. Like we will buy it. NWC cart, absolutely. Yeah, gold and gray. What gold? <laughs> you heard me. You heard me. Did I stutter? Did you guys ever figure out super how? High. Yeah. Did you guys ever figure out how close you were when you were doing the NES pursuit? We got pretty close. We were probably, actually, I don't even know if we were close. We were probably close to like five. It was like unintentional because back then it was like, we're going to get every NES game. But like there was no like structure. It was just like, where are we at in the count? I don't know. Do you have 28 copies of Duck Hunt? Probably. (laughs) I don't know. Like there was no like organization to it. Now, you know, we have it kind of figured out. We're using price charting right now. Currently, that might change depending on maybe Phoenix Resales app, depending. Um, One up. I think is what it's called. Yeah. Shout out to that. I don't know where it's yeah. at by the time this video goes out. <laughs> but uh, right now, it's funny. At the time of this filming, so I don't when you watch this, it might be later, but we've only filmed twice and we're like at 136 games. I feel like now we have like wisdom. You know, with age come, comes wisdom. Blake, you'll learn. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, but, with, you know, we've we've kind of had better wisdom. We have, we're in better financial places, I will say. We were, talk, <laughs> we were talking last night. What was our honest budget for, like, games back then? $40 for the weekend. If that. That's it. That was it. We that was it. The flea market. Yeah, Imagine going to the it. flea market, Blake, with $40, and that was your budget. No matter what. I feel like that's how kind of how I started. Yeah. 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 Like 40 bucks. What do you bring now? Whatever it takes. You know what I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say. You don't think he, he only brings Venmo. I swear. Every time he goes up to a vendor, he goes, these, Take Venmo? These, <laughs> new, these new kids these days. <laughs> I mean, we were talking guy. about it the other day, and we said we, we're about four or five hundred bucks on a weekend. I think at the flea. At oh, same. Yeah, yeah, easily. Sometimes more. 
some, a lot of times on a light more. weekend, yeah. maybe two, three hundred. I feel like I, I feel like I always will be like, I'm going to bring five hundred cash, and then the minute I go to Dusty's, I'm like, I better go back to the ATM. Yeah, I'm always <laughs> just making ATM trips. Now. Yeah, yeah. Forty bucks would last like two, per, one purchase. Maybe. And again, yeah. more power to you. Or if that is only your budget, awesome, totally stick within your means. We've said that before on the show. That's super huge. Don't go buying hundreds of dollars worth video games if your budget really is forty dollars or twenty dollars. Be smart. Don't go into debt. But what we're just saying is that now where we're at. Yeah. We have a little bit more financial freedom of being able to be like, hey, I want this game that's, you know, $100. Yes, I will pay $80 if I need it. We hey. passed on stadium events for 70 bucks back in the day. No, uh, Little Samson. Little Samson. Sorry, we passed on Little Imagine. Samson. <laughs> passed on it. For little 70 Samson bucks. for 70 bucks. Dang. Wasn't even that long ago, like 2013 maybe. He wanted 100 and we're like, uh, he's like 70. A long time like, ago uh, for me. <laughs> How old were you? <laughs> I was, uh... 2013, I was uh, I was 11. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was graduating high school, so <laughs> which is crazy. I was playing my PS2 games. <laughs> oh, Chris was filling out his retirement papers. <laughs> Just, I'm saying, oh, I feel like that one hurt. No, that's, that's, the, that's the first time I've ever made a joke at Chris. Or after he's like, dang. <laughs> Just trying to think me. how old I was in 2013. Let's see, 2019. Oh man, yeah, 20. What is that? 10 years ago. 30s, uh, late mid 30s, like okay. mid 30s. Okay, like my age. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're in later 30s now. I'm a late I 30s. No, no. Rip told me this like interesting thing. Like it was pretty funny. He goes, We're going to ask like this really good question. Like, do people take you like seriously at swap meets looking the way and you And I say that with love. Oh, but then, like, it was funny don't. though. No, so, like, let me, no let me one see. Expects, no, no, like, let's say this for the audio listeners before you go on. Blake, we joke around. Skinny, you look very young. Yes. Again, like yeah. I said, I was literally joking, but you either look really old or super young, yeah. like twelve. Yeah. But he also dresses like a seventy-five year old, but it's like a cool seventy-five. Year yes. Old. Yeah. I'll dress like I'm from the seventies. <laughs> I'll dress from the eighties, nineties. You know. Oh, you know who you kind of look like? I just well, if your hair was combed a little differently and it was darker, uh, Nikolai Tesla. Who did? Who test the, the creator of alternate current I'll and everything? That. I'll take that. Yeah, that's awesome. By the way, I just learned today that he was celibate his entire life. But I don't know why I'm saying that. But I just learned that today. <laughs> well, so he uh, he had an attraction towards uh, some like inanimate object. Oh well, I mean yeah. he he was a g actual genius. Yeah, he was but, a genius. Okay, going on to what Curtis said. Do you have experiences, stories where people completely don't take you serious, realize you're a hustler and you're doing it right, or what? Um. I would say, like, at a lot of flea markets, people don't like showing me what they have in their trucks. Um, like, you know how, like, there's a lot of side deals that are done. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like bringing me to, like, where the good stuff is because they don't think I'm willing to pay up for, for anything. <laughs> don't bring this guy by the van. <laughs> I was going to say, is that because you look sketchy? <laughs> <laughs> they know Blake will throw him in the back of the van immediately. <laughs> um, but honestly, like... If I come around enough, people understand that like I am willing to spend quite a bit of money on things. Like uh, Dusty, he's realized that. <laughs> so you're 21 now. At what age was it, or even how recently? Maybe it was. I don't know. I want to hear. Was it a long time ago or recent to where you started to be able to like throw down cash, like good money? Because I remember when I even first met you, I didn't know really much about you. You just were a cool guy, friends with Chris, and I remember being at the swap, and I, I think it was. I think it was Dusty again, but I just remember him being like, oh, 600 bucks for these shirts. And I just remember you like not questioning or something and paying. And I was like, oh, wow, like this guy's a hustler. Well, when I met first met Blake, let me jump in on this. So he, he was selling <laughs> shirts to me. You were, that was maybe probably three, four years ago. Like now. Four years ago. Now. So he was hustling. Then he was going to the Goodwill bins. You were mm -hmm. buying shirts. He was coming into my shop and selling them to me. And we were working out. I don't know. Maybe I was buying those shirts off you for seven, eight bucks. They were co more common, like mm -hmm. anime shirts and stuff like that. But at that time, so if it was four years ago, you were probably like seven, maybe 18, 17, 18. I think I was 18. Maybe, maybe actually no, I was 17 still. I just maybe turned 18. Okay. And maybe. what would you say your financial step, like situation at that point was? Oh, I was still working at Dairy Queen at the time. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You I know used to go in and get blizzards from yeah. <laughs> The one on... PCH? On no, on Warner. Uh, Warner. He knows how to do the perfect swirl. That's the Has yeah. there ever been a Dairy Queen gone wrong where you flipped it and it and it came no, down? That was perfect. Don't perfect employee. All right, real talk. Is Dairy Queen like like do you, do you like now looking back? You're like, yeah, this place was like rad, like awesome, good run business. Or are you like, dude, that's a gnarly place? He was scenes. the honestly, he was a great first boss. Yeah, he he was uh he wasn't like a mean guy, but if I uh 
I definitely should needed to get out of there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't making that much money. Is um, Chris a better boss? Yes, by far the best boss I've ever had. By Aww. far. Two yeah. bosses. You guys can all come work for me. <laughs> we'll, we'll ask you after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he holds it. Blink twice if you're okay. <laughs> Now, um, when you guys shot a video at Blake's, like, how was that experience? Like, seeing his just, I bet it wasn't as big of a collection now, but how was it when you guys shot that video? Over oh, there? dude, it was cool. Blake has some gnarly, weird stuff. Blake has, like, weird, cool stuff, like Ninja Turtle stuff, shirts I've never seen. This sweater I wanted to buy off him, Simpson stuff. Okay, so the bootleg stuff is, like, insane that he has. And I love bootleg stuff, but he's got some stuff I've never seen. Yeah. Still don't see. So Blake has taught me about shirts a ton. In fact, everything I learned about buying shirts from, like, looking at tags to how to identify them, like, that, I got an education from you on that. <laughs> you were by far the most educated I've ever met on shirts. And then I think I reciprocated that with, to you by with media. teaching you about media, Game. games, pretty much all these other things that you can sell. So. I remember going to your house and being very, very impressed is the word. You know, again, because, you know, you're young, right? Yeah. And it, there is a little bit of like, you know, that comes with that. Like, you know, you kind of have to prove yourself to some people. Not to us. Obviously, we brought you in with open arms. Come here, Blake. <laughs> he, was, he was so fuzzy headed that we loved you too much. <laughs> but when we went to your place, I was just immediately like, wow, like these the kind of video games you have were like the weird ps2 games the vhs collections that you had were like what i like the weird the dumb the, the non one ones it's just so funny because when you first get into any you know genre you know like say you get into horror you get people who are like dude don't worry i found like a bunch of horror vhs tapes and they're bringing you all the ones they would expect to be good they're bringing out all the names you've the it that you've seen a thousand times the exorcist one you've seen a thousand times but it's like the weird the funky, the B, the C horror where, you know. And what I'm impressed is at your age, being only 21 and starting at like 15, you know, 16, 17, A, one, your hustle, like just have a really good hustle mentality. But two, to like, you are almost as knowledgeable on stuff that we grew up with. Like you're buying things that, you know, we're more aware. I can look at something and be like, that's cool because I remember that was cool. Versus you have no knowledge of half this stuff. I'm just taking a shot. Yeah, to, and you take yeah. a shot, but yeah. you have a good eye for it. It takes an eye. Not like, everybody can do that. He's been teaching you about games. What's like your favorite style of like era of video games? Like, do you leech more towards NES? Oh, SNES? PS2 by far. PS2. Yeah, I, my PS2 collection has grown a lot recently. Um, I've had some excess cash, so I've been buying uh, the games flex. Like can. Yeah, yeah right. the flex, flex though. Yeah. I like it. That's why he wears baggy yeah. pants to fit all the cash in there. <laughs> <laughs> Are those the hookup ones? Uh, uh, no, I wish I should have worn those though. I love those pants. Another sad story with those. <laughs> you can, well, you can tell that story. Yeah, that's yeah. a great yeah, story. That's tell a great story. story. Tell yeah. the full story. I, tell I me know who Dusty story. is. So tell so, uh, I was at Dusty's booth at Long Beach Flea Market, and um, he had pulled out two pairs of hookups pants, and they are they're like from the first or second year hookups. Like like was like a company, and. Uh, I, he's like letting me look at them and I was questioning it because they were expensive pants and he was asking a lot of money for them and I was like uh, like let me walk around Dusty and I set him down and I was talking to his like brother I think and I like Dusty asked me where the shoes I mean where the pants were and I turned around and I was like oh they're right there and they were gone and I was like oh no like, how much was he asking on them he was asking like I think 300 a pair okay. and he wanted five for both what were they worth? Would you estimate? Seven, I, I seven, honestly th like seven eight hundred a piece in a my piece. opinion. Ooh. Yeah. For those who don't know, hookups the skateboarding yeah. brand. Their pants. Yeah. What's What's crazy about that story too is we almost never. Ricky and I almost never go to that swap meet, and we walked up right after right they after. got stolen. <laughs> right and I was after. like, Blake, what up, dog? Like, shit, my Just boy. The, the look and, of worry on my face, huh? You, if you could see him, Blake is a white guy, but he was like, <laughs> was white ghost pale. guy. He was like, ghost clear, see-through. Yeah. I was like, oh, what happened to him? He's like, he, he couldn't even like tell us the story. And I was Dustin. so was flustered. Was that at Long Beach that happened? <laughs> yeah, that was a, yeah. Oh man, that sucks. The timing yeah. too, Ricky and I walked up as it happened. <laughs> Almost as like the time we walked up as your sculptor's cut or whatever it was. Uh, got that, yeah, that was like five minutes wow. after that. Dang. Tragedy happens mm, right before co I come. Coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> next time you show up <laughs> in the podcast, you have sick hookups <laughs> pants on. There's a, there's a sculptor's cut. It's all here. thrown into Ricky's three sheds. <laughs> I know. Ricky's four We're just jokes. connecting mm. the dots over here. <laughs> now, now, specifically to like uh, swap meets, do you have any like crazy swap meet story where you found like your best item? Oh, 
Well, one that got me into media mm. was Chris knew someone that was selling VHS at the Long Beach Flea Market. And we pulled up and it was just banger VHS tapes. And they were a dollar, two dollars a piece. Which I- all like horror Japanese like Toho video stuff and I had no idea about VHS. Oh, that was Juan. That yeah. Was Juan, Juan and David did, yep. did had that. Uh, for Juan is a Secret Game yeah. Yeah. Yep. And um oh my gosh, we should have bought the whole thing. We should have bought the entire thing. We must have bought like I think I bought a hundred tapes okay. for like two hundred dollars. And that was but back then I I was like kind of like worried that was about it. I, it, it. I was, was worried about it. It was a lot of like bootleg like Japanese stuff that you don't see. There was like the Godzilla's and Mm-hmm. Is like there that. like an estimated value on what that lot was worth? Oh man, oh, I don't know. Sure. Some of those tapes were probably fifty to hundred bucks a piece. I and sold a lot of them. Of I sold a couple of them for like 150, 200 bucks. Jeez. We didn't realize it until yeah. after we went home that day. I started looking <laughs> them up. We started looking them up. We were like, oh my gosh, these are like fifty hundred dollar tapes. I we I called Juan within like an hour, and I was like, we're going to be right back there. And he's like, oh, some guy just came and you bought know what's them all. funny? Oh, one of my was like maybe a thousand left. One of my best VHS stories was buying a ton of horror VHS for a dollar each. And the banger, the variant cover of uh, Killer Clowns was in there. All the Grail Horror VHS. And at the time, I was like kind of newer to it. And I took them straight to Chris. And in Did my I opinion, this? you got a good deal. But I, God, in my I opinion, I went. <laughs> but in my opinion, I waxed you. Because I paid like 70. You gave me like 850. Did I give you 850 bucks? Dude, yeah. But They're I'm trying to remember VHS. They were, really they were bangers. And there was, a, I'm talking like, been four, early on I'm talking like $400 met, VHS huh? tapes. Like a good amount of them. It's a, it's not coming to memory right now. But I mean, that's still a good deal if you felt like you hosed me. And I was probably like, I hosed you. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> that's a win-win though. Yeah, it, that's yeah. a win-win. win-win. Absolutely. Now, you know? each of you guys have been actually getting like into like the storage units, right? And mm-hmm. buying things from people. Um, you guys had a tip off from Dustin. How was that with all the VHS and all that? Can you explain to the Man, people? that was a lot of work at the end of the day. That, that was, was two full... straight days. Yeah, we were just talking about that earlier this morning because we were like, how how many... we're looking at another lot that's 30,000 30, VHS. 000. So you oh. bought a storage locker full of... V... Just so the yeah. audience... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it was a storage locker from Dusty. that does... Dusty gave us the tip. Dusty didn't want to deal with it. Mm. Afterwards, we said to Dusty, we know now why you didn't want to deal with it because it, it took boxed. us two full days to clear that out. Wow. I mean, we must have moved... A lot of them were just garbage VHS, so they got thrown out. So we're picking, you know, medium to good ones. Uh, we took, I don't even know how many boxes, maybe, maybe 10, 15 full big boxes. I think it ended up being 16 boxes. So you took them and Blake just watched you take them? <laughs> no, we, we, him and I, no, him and I, we, when we do deals like that, we split them 50-50. So we paid for the unit 50-50. We didn't know it was in there, and then we divvy up. No, 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 you no, want, no, no I was a... talking about his strength. I wasn't talking about how much he took. Oh, strength-wise, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm he did most of the heavy lifting. I'm the <laughs> muscle of the two. Uh. But we have a funny thing we do afterwards. So when we bought that lot, like we have now... 15 boxes of VHS, say, say it's 1,500 VHS. We open up every one. We rock, paper, scissors, who goes first. We lay them all out, and we pick one at a time. It takes <laughs> we hours take to hours. go through that. We, we that. used to do that. It's really fun, actually. I yeah. actually love it, enjoy it. We'll sit there for hours doing it. I smoke him at rock, papers, and scissors. I've never I'm, won. Like, I, I am so in his head. I got him every time. He gets I'm so mad. Way. I never won rock, paper, scissors. Like, can we just do a coin flip at this yeah, point? This is never never won. Won. <laughs> You're my employee, and you'll do what I say. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah that was a good score yeah 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 that was a good one when you guys uh were able to get that one unit with uh one of the fans of the show and you saw those japanese toys how was that go ahead Ooh. ricky dude that brought back a lot of memories that's a lot of voltron a lot of transformers dude he had some great stuff i didn't even realize it was the vintage transformers until i brought it in here we started looking at it. i was like dude this is the real one i thought those were the repro that storage locker we bought us we bought pretty much the majority of the storage locker and it was i'd say it was the most we've ever been reached out to from our audience after a video dropped because it was just full of so much good it wasn't just like you know when you buy someone sells you a collection it's typically like you know some common nes games common super nintendo common ps2 whatever it may be it was like 70 uncommon turbo graphics games 30 uncommon jaguar games Neo Geo MVS console wise Jaguar consoles. It was all the weird stuff. And then the toys, 
it was the same eclectic taste. It was all yeah. like the 80s and 90s Voltrons and Transformers. The boxes are four feet tall. Like everything was just insane. And just everybody was reaching out. <laughs> we want to buy this. We want to buy this. We want to buy this. We kept some of it, sold some of it. Ricky kept most of the toys. Yeah, I kept most that of the toys. That giant Voltron, <laughs> dude. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I used to get more scores like that. Maybe one a year. I feel like I only get one now, one every couple of years. I feel uh, like they're fewer and far. Yeah, between. man, get better at hunting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one also did like semi walk into my store, which was funny. The guy had come in, said he was interested in selling that stuff. Somehow that didn't coordinate back to me. Yeah, right? Get waxed. I, know, I got waxed. Get waxed I'm not going to lie. Bro. I was a little bit like, oh man, dude, that one stung a little bit. Cause I was like, man, I could have had that one. I'll be honest. I think he was more comfortable selling to us cause he watched the show. So he was more just like. I, I, he felt like he knew us in a sense. So obviously, you know, I'm sure you guys treated him well too, but back then I don't think at the time you were on the show much or the podcast. So he just wasn't as comfortable yeah. as letting it that go. That matters a lot too. Yeah. yeah. Now with like the new, the new announcement of you guys, like really starting your pursuit. Like I really liked how on like one of your first videos, you tell the audience like, Hey, it's okay not to spend the money just because of your budget. Right. Like I think when the guy was like trying to double you up and you're like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Kind of explain like how you're going to go into approaches with conventions and all those type of deals. Yeah. So I, I do say Ricky and I are obviously we're better in financial situations than we were, you know, 10 years ago. And, but just because I have that financial situation, I'm not going to be allowing myself just to get hosed on prices just so I get content. Right. And I feel like that's a mistake. Sometimes content creators can make. It's like, well, I need, I need the footage. I need footage. I'm just going to pay, you know, $15 on this $10 game, but I had to teach myself and we've filmed the first episode by this time goes out. I'm sure the audience will have seen it. Hopefully they did on pixel game squad, but I did like, I went to a booth and I'm like, it was my first booth back into the show, back into NES pursuit day one. Like, here we go. Going to buy NES games. I go to the booth, all comments. And I'm like, sweet. I need every single one of these because we're day one, zero games. I picked up a stack of like 30 games. And I'm like, all right, dude, how much for all of them? And they're, I'm talking like they're like the $3 games, the $4 games at most. And he's just like, I can't go anything below 10 each. And I was like, <laughs> all right, man, I'll take uh, those two. And, and I, it was almost like a good for him to see it too. Like he had a buyer willing to spend money. You know what it's worth even. But I just had to teach myself. I walked away like I know I wanted the content. I know I wanted to be able to say I bought 35 games right away. But I'm like, no, I stuck to my guns and I felt like I walked away with like a little more pride than I would have, you know. So what's the plan? Like what what maybe kind of rules do you are you setting for yourself? Are you gonna go on eBay or no, 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 no. So no. only in the wild? Not necessarily only in swap meet, but it can be trade events, conventions, swap meets, flea markets, store private sellers, yeah. Private sellers, you, Blake Reek, so, hey, I don't have I have any S games I don't want. You can buy them off me that way. So I'd call that all in the wild. In yeah, my yeah. opinion, to, to me that's all in the wild. I would just say if you were going online buying no online stuff, purchase at all. Adding thousands of dollars. We're going to your point. place next, Chris. Yeah, let's yeah, go. Let's go. Twenty percent off? <laughs> sure. For oh, let's go. Yeah. 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 Call it now. Call it now. <laughs> yeah. I don't even get twenty percent. <laughs> yeah, bro. I get fifteen. You gotta wait till you hit twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> let's get Blake into uh, his first experience of agree or disagree. Let's go. <laughs> Are you ready for this, bro? Yes. You know this works? Yeah. Thumbs up, you agree. Thumbs down, you disagree? Yep. If you oh. don't know, you pick anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. We're going to go on with a spicy one. Oh, already? I Mario like games are overrated. No. No. <gasps> wow. Blake and Chris say Mario games are overrated. Ricky and I say no. Go ahead, Blake. You go start. ahead, guys. I'm I'm not much of a Nintendo guy. I have Ooh, like uh, oh, Nintendo's overrated. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Let me just take this away. <laughs> a, little, a little too far there, Blake. A little bit too much. Uh, I don't know. I've never really like finished a complete Mario game. Like even like uh, on the DS. Like uh, I loved my DS. Like that might have been the only Nintendo like like the system range. that I, I loved, and uh, I didn't. Wow! Didn't even coming in, it. coming in hot. Didn't even finish it. Now, he, now, Chris wearing a Super Mario All Stars hat. <laughs> explain, uh. <laughs> explain yourself. <laughs> um, I have not had as much interest to play Mario games as of recent. I know Super Mario Wonder came out. Oh, it's Mario great. RPG. I have no desire to play them now. If Zelda drops, I'm all about Zelda. I honestly would make the case, in my opinion, that Mario has been dethroned. And I would say Zelda is a much higher 
and I wonder what the numbers are on the games that have actually come out. Yeah, yeah. But to me, for me, this is a personal thing. Yeah. I feel like Zelda drops. I want. I can't wait for Zelda to come out. Mario. I don't know. I I ended at Super Mario World, and I'm like. Never wow. went. I don't know. I lost me after that. Ricky, what's hey. your thoughts, <laughs> dude? Super Mario World. That's all I have to say. Dude, Mario games are too good. They're so fun. Blake, have you ever played Super Mario World? Like maybe a little bit, but then I was like, uh, Mario sixty four. Yeah. Mario three. Uh, Let no, me say this. <laughs> Let me say this. Ricky's just like trying to do an encyclopedia. Let me all. say this. I can't think of another franchise in existence. I'm going to argue that he's one of the best game series of all time. Not even just that he's overrated. I can't think of another video game franchise where you could pick any of the mainline games and it's not an A game. Mario 1, Mario 2, Mario 3, Mario 64, Mario World, Mario All-Stars, uh, Yoshi's Island. Your favorite, Odyssey. Uh, Mario Odyssey, Mario 64. Every single one of those games is an A game, so in good. my opinion. Super Mario World, to me, is the the best Mario game, in my opinion. But yeah, it's one of the best platformers in history. such an incredible game, so I can't deny that. Yeah. I just think now with the new Mario stuff, it just doesn't appease to me as much. That's right. No, hey, that's, that's what this is for. Yeah. We agree and you disagree. <laughs> but so, you're wrong. <laughs> but dong. All right, we're going to go into our second one. It's another gaming related. It's going to be open world games are the worst. The worst. Agree or disagree? Hmm. So we got, already got two disagrees. I'm going to disagree because I don't. Go. I'm going to disagree because I don't think they're the worst, but I, I don't. I'll get into that. Go ahead, Ricky. I'm going to disagree. Oh, does this mean I have to agree? You no. have to agree, Ricky. <laughs> I'll disagree. I just I, I don't play them enough. I don't know enough. I about. love open world games. They're my favorite style of games. Oh, they're his favorite. Yeah, they're oh. my favorite. Have you seen the New World Pal game? I mean, new game Pal, Pal, world? Pal world. Yeah. Yeah, I heard they're getting like sued or something now already. Who cares? It's so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. What game can you do a three sixty no scope on a Pokemon and then also capture one? That is pretty cool. <laughs> what is that, that game that about? Fun. I'm not even. Familiar. It's like a bootleg. Pokemon, Pokemon yeah. but like there's like a 3D like building aspect to it. Like you can like build a house. It's kind of like, like Rust Roblox. and Pokemon mixed together. It's awesome. I will say I I do like open world games, but I just I do not have the time to get into them anymore. Every time I play them, I feel like within an hour, I'm like, I'll never play this again because I love it, but I know I cannot possibly get to an end point. I get sucked Too much into to it. Do. I get sucked into it. Yeah, I need my, my, my platformers with a linear end point. I mean, would you consider like Tears of the Kingdom? Like, yeah, that's I mean, open world, right? Really? It's more sandbox. But that has an end. Yeah, like, I guess, is PAL like, like sandboxy, like Roblox kind of? Like, it's kind of like yeah, a that's GTA. What I, that's what I keep thinking. Yeah. It's like GTA. Yeah, is it just yeah. like, oh, just okay. play like GTA, forever? You can do whatever you want kind of thing. You know what mm. I mean? Yeah. They're not my favorite. So Zelda would be. Yeah, I mean, I like those games. They yeah, are lengthy, though. They're like Red Dead Zelda, Redemption. You- yeah, Red Dead. Yeah, Red Dead. Red Dead is oh, awesome. Red Dead's so That's good. a good open world one. That's a good one. That good. is so fun. It is so good. But you know, it's funny. Like I noticed how quickly just now I said yes. Like when you said Red Dead, but it's almost because it's when I had more time. Yeah. Like yeah. I remember playing it when I had time to play it. But like it could, does come down to time with those. Like I don't I ge- play them as much. I genuinely don't think I'll play like the new Grand Theft Auto because I just know that I can't have time. I'll get That's lost in the sauce. Oh, I'm going to get lost. Yeah, I, I <laughs> will too. I with the open world, I have to pick them like few and far between. You have to. Like, because they're like 200 hour time commitments. Now. I don't have that. Put that time into SoCal. <laughs> 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 All right. We're going to go on to our next one. It's going to be collecting VHS is better than collecting games. No. Disagree. Disagree. For me and Ricky. Blake says yes. Oh, man. Chris, you have a I game store. with this. <laughs> <laughs> Retro Games Plus is your store name. Retro SoCal <laughs> Gaming Expo. Retro VHS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the white side of the room votes <laughs> VHS <laughs> is better to collect. All right, Blake, yeah. let's hear it. Uh, I love movies. I, I can watch movies for, for hours on end because that's what, when I'm listing, that's what I'm doing. I'm watching movies. And... Uh, on VHS, there's movies that I still have never seen before or even heard of. And when I show someone, they're like, what? You know what I mean? I love watching that kind of stuff. Just now when we were at your car, you showed me like four VHS I've never seen. And I collect VHS. Tiptoes. It's a VHS that sells for $50. Like, what's your favorite movie of all time? Oh, Lord, The Goonies. No, nice. nice. Lord of the Goonies. <laughs> yeah, The Goonies. Good I love choice. that movie. That's a, yeah. good, that's a good movie. That's my Great classic choice. childhood movie. Dang. Uh, why do you think VHS are better? 
just as of recent, for what you, a lot of the reasons you said too, is I come a lot of, across a lot of VHS, and I'm just like, what on earth is this? And I'm so intrigued. Um, I don't come across as many games that that, is, that I'm like, what is this? I need to go play that right now. Mm. Maybe I've either seen gameplay, or we've talked about it, or I've come across it before. But we come across the strangest, strangest, craziest VHS. Yeah. And when we're doing like the you know picking and stuff like that, how many do I take away that I'm like, I need to watch this. I need to watch this. I so need many. to watch this. So a lot. Many. And so just for that reason. So you open world VHS then? Like, so you yes. spend all your time on that? <laughs> Sandbox VHS. No, I, I get that. I do agree, obviously, that there is so much more, at least, that we have never heard of. You could show me a, a stack of 100 VHS at the Swap Me, and I'd probably never heard of a good 10 of them. Mm -hmm. But if you gave me a stack of video games, I get that aspect. I'd probably be like, uh, I know every single one of them. For the most part. There is those like hidden ones that sneak in here and there. Yeah, Rick, any thoughts or? Well, I just feel like when I'm doing video games, I'm collecting my childhood. But I guess I that could go for VHS too. But yeah, I don't know. The kid in me always wants the the games. That's the games. what it's all yeah. about. I love both, so that's a hard. I love both as well. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, I found cut. it interesting. Uh, Riff sent me a message the other day, and it was like the music of just like a random game. What was that game, dude? So we got to pull this up at some point. Nobunga's Ambition <laughs> Two <laughs> on the NES, like one of the <laughs> dumbest, like random games. The one of the worst games on the NES. Yeah. And I was listening to a playlist there of like random NES music, and I'm like sitting there doing a thumbnail, and I'm just like what is this like godly, heavenly, beautiful music? And I'm like, no Bunga's ambition too. Like this is the <laughs> dumbest thing I've ever heard of, but the soundtrack was just so beautiful. And it's, it is moments like that where you discover like, man, I've never in my, I've heard people talk about underrated soundtracks. You know, there's the Pictionary soundtrack, which is underrated, but yeah. that one I'm like, I've never heard a soul in my life. Yeah. I'm going to pull it up at some point while you yeah. guys were doing the next one. And then no, play no, it. I'll just make sure I'll, I'll put it in right now. And then I'll, I'll put it in right, and then I'll go on to the next I can one. do the, the easy work and just stick yeah. it up to here if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look it up while we're All going. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we'll go on to our next one. It's going to be uh, games should let you demo their games before like they did like on Toys R Us and game stores. So like games should let you demo their games without having to buy it and actually like physically play it first. In store? In store. In store or even at home. What about the demo discs? Yeah, I like the demo discs. Anything like realistically, just let get like instead of like you have to buy it first and then realize what it is. You know what I mean? Like back yeah, in the day, got, you could go up you. to a, you can go up to a kiosk and I, play it. I'm not letting you talk. Isn't this the graduation song? I was going to say that pomp and <laughs> circumstance. <laughs> it's pretty so good. good. That yeah, is yeah. good. That is really good. It's now Bunga's got some good music. Yeah. I'm telling you, that hit me. I was almost like, I feel nostalgic and I've never even played the game. <laughs> like, <laughs> that is pretty good. All right, I had to throw it in there. No, it's fine. All right, so back to that. It's a uh, game should let you demo their games either in store or at home or even by playable discs like they used to. I'm going to say no. Oh. Lake says yes. Chris says no. I'll say yes because I do. I do. I do miss doing that. Why don't you talk first, Ricky? You're the right. quiet one. George Harrison. You're the George Harrison <laughs> of the group. I am the George yeah. Harrison of the group. I just. I don't know. I, I feel gypped a lot of times when I buy a game and it's just horrid, like the dumbest thing. But I do see it in in their view point of view because. If they have a cruddy game, they're like, dude, let's not show anything about this. Let's just put make it really interesting on online and that's it. But I wanna I, I wanna feel the game. Like I I've, I've played games where they look amazing, but once you actually use the controller for it, it's the worst game. I'm like, this you, re you realize terrible. you were watching a cutscene? <laughs> yeah, You're pretty like, much. No, that's not the actual <laughs> game. What's your thought? You disagreed with me. I disagreed because well, I haven't bought a game at like launch in a long time. Yeah. So by the time I'm buying games, I feel like it's been out and I I just go to YouTube. And I just look at gameplay and I'm like, that's either a game I would like or I'm not going to like. So I don't necessarily have to have the controller in my hand, I feel like, as long as I can see the gameplay, I get a good gist for it. Yeah. So, you know, another reason I'd want it? Because I want to get that kiosk after they're done with it. <laughs> that is <correct. laughs> good old thing of the collecting. I like it. Blake? Um, I don't know. When I was a kid and I would get like the demo discs and like play, like the magazines or oh, like, yeah, yeah. like because at PS2, you would get like the disc. The jam the pack, I think yeah, it was called. Yeah, you get the jam pack. Yeah. Underground. And, and the underground. I loved yeah. it. That would make me go to the store and want to like purchase the full game. And yeah. like it was like, 
like I got to see what was coming out. You know what I mean? It was it was God, fun. You know, when I used to get those demo discs, I actually despised them. I, I hated loved putting it. those in <laughs> and then not mom. having the full game and then getting to a certain point. And so I used to just toss those things. And even when they come into my store now, I see demo discs. I'm like, get that out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and now they're like, some of them are worth money. And I'm like, what? I could throw those out for years. But. I, I think they're awesome. I'm like in the middle on it because I feel like, yes, you could get swayed away from... I feel like it's hard to know because some people will be into the game, some won't. So I don't know if you're like, if it evens itself out of like people who didn't like the game losing sales on that versus people who never would have bought it and gaining sales off that. So I feel like mm. maybe it evens out, but I don't know. I'm, I also do as much as I appreciate what demos are. I also sometimes try to think in the business mindset, like you can't try everything before you buy it. Right. You can test drive a car. Yes. I get that certain things, but like, I don't know a house you can, you can even buy it a brand new build, but you can't live in it for a year before you know if it's settled as in right. You know what I mean? Or even food, right? You go to the store and, well, sure, I'll take number two. And then you get it and it tastes like diarrhea. And you're like, well, I guess that's what it is. I bought it. Tastes like Curtis's cooking. <laughs> you know, but make a better game. You know what I mean? That'd be like the craziest part. But we'll go on to our next one. It's going to be current comic books are garbage. Uh-oh. Current comic books are garbage. I'm ready to hurt. I'm ready to hurt so many people. Let's hear it. Let's see. Change it. the word "current" with "all." <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. No, yeah. uh, I I don't know. I don't read comics. I literally cannot answer. I'm putting my uh, thing yeah, out. No, answer. what are you, Dusty, with the car, man? What the heck? Is I that? literally can't. He I, changed I the game. Let me tell you how many comics I've read in my life. Maybe like three pages from like a Nintendo comic system magazine. Maybe, maybe. I don't read comics. I can't answer. I don't read comics. Okay, me and Blake call outsies. Yeah. Dang. I disagree with this. I I don't read hardly many comics anymore when i was growing up i did read a ton of comics i did um i am reading one now i'm reading like the spirits of vengeance the ghost rider series from the 90s again with like danny ketch and stuff so i do enjoy reading comics as far as new ones though the only last series that i got into was the michelangelo series that came out it was like a solo michelangelo, michelangelo? yeah oh, okay. tmnt yeah oh the ronin 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 thank you ronin, oh, ronin. and i did that read, I know cool things about yeah. i did read that that came out maybe like two years ago yeah and I mean, it was incredible. It was a story of basically Michelangelo. All the other turtles have been killed, and he's going after like Shredder solo now. And he's, is it, it Ralph or sick. Michelangelo? I couldn't remember. It was Michelangelo. Michelangelo, right? I thought it was yeah, Ralph. Too. I thought it was Ralph. I thought it was Ralph too. No, I'm pretty. I'm like 99 okay. percent sure. I, no, I, I honestly, I'll I'm, get Google out. You guys keep talking about your comics. <laughs> um, <laughs> but other than that, like I see some of the comics that have come out. I know they just redid like, I, well, like, this was like I think 2000. Don't quote me on the year in this. Maybe it was five, four or five years ago. Like they had a new Robbie. Robbie Reyes was the new Ghost Rider. So he came out. Um, we see some of the newer ones come through and they look pretty awesome. To they me. look cool. They're just not worth a ton. So I don't, They're not, <laughs> I don't keep them in mind. I love Blake. <laughs> not worth money. Don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah, most of them are worth the garbage, dude. Well, they were worth garbage when we were buying them back in the 90s and 80s, too. So uh, it might take another 20, 30 years. But to me, some of the ones that come out look pretty awesome. Uh, there was like Preacher was one that I saw recently came through the shop. I'm like, that looks pretty awesome. You know what's interesting about the Wikipedia it's just like in most of the things, it doesn't say which turtle, it just says a lone turtle haunted by his hallucinations of his deceased brothers. Um, but then there is a part where it says Mikey later on, it says Mikey catches up with April. So maybe yeah, that's, it's, it's yeah. Michael. Maybe it's Mikey. Okay. Yeah. That, that was really good. I like that. I like the art on it. I'm not the a comic guy. Yeah, no, I awesome. just have seen a lot of art and it looks really cool. Yeah, it was good. So I'm, I'm a, from what I see, I'm a fan of some of the newer comics coming out, mm. but I don't know if many, as many people are reading them. Because comic book stores have kind of been struggling recently, so mm. unfortunately. That sucks. That's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we'll go on to the next one. It's going to be arcade systems are making a comeback. Arcades are making a Well. Agree or disagree? I mean, you got one-ups now. <laughs> you got. Yeah, I'll say yeah, they are. I'm going to say no, and everyone All else right. says yes. That's fine. Um. I feel like I heard a lot of talk about arcades like three or four years ago. I'm just going off literally by what I've just heard people talking about. I just feel like I heard a lot of talk around arcades like three, four years ago, and then I haven't in the last year and a half. I feel like it's just like I haven't heard anyone talk about arcade one up or I'm modding this or I just feel like the conversations maybe because we bought a couple three, four years ago, a lot of people talk about around us and the conversation just kind of died. So I don't know if that's actually what the market's doing, but maybe you guys can 
No, I kind of agree with that too. There was a big hype. Like there was so many barcades being opened up everywhere where, and then there was the big arcade one up hype. But most recently I was reading about them that they were kind of struggling. They came out with like a casino game. Right. Arcade one up did? Yeah, yeah. They have like a wheel of fortune and then it has like slots on it too. Oh dude. They put nice. the U.S.'s gambling addiction. Wow. <laughs> they came out with like a tabletop board game, I think. What? Like where you can play like 300 board games, like on like a, table I but mean. it's electronic it's yeah. electronic oh, which cool. is a cool idea yeah but i th my guess is that <laughs> blake's like crap <laughs> garbage <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my guess is that either you know obviously they have some licensing re you know relationships but they might have ran out of all the big titles like the x-men's the turtles simpsons. the simpsons and then you start diving into like more obscure stuff right and i don't know if the market would be there for the more obscure stuff more obscure stuff is Cool, and we would probably like the more obscure yeah. stuff, yeah. but you're not going to sell to the general market of, you know, 40 year old men who don't play games anymore, but they walk by and go, "Ooh, Pac-Man," and they buy it. You're going to lose those people. Yes, because yeah. I and feel I, like that's where the, a lot of the big sales were. Right, the yeah, Walmart's, ones. yeah, the regular huge, dudes. Because I can't tell you how many a few years ago, like I said, going to you know meet uh, one of my kids friends from school and i go to their house to pick them up and the dad's like hey yeah, i got a street fighter one up back there that's cool you know but they're not necessarily a gamer so like you said i feel like if you're going to get into some of those i don't know what are some of the lesser lesser loved titles i feel like man caves is what it's for i must have 12 arcade one-ups in my house do you Whoa. oh yeah. yeah that's right you do, you I do have, about that. have a lot what's my family one? loves them what's your favorite one? Oh, it's got to be terminator Oh, Judgment Day. Nice. That's the awesome. gun one, right? Yeah, the gun has kickback to it too. It's really. Cool. How, I was gonna say, how is the gun one? It's with... good. It's really good. They're like they feel light. Obviously, they're a lot lighter a than lot the lighter. than the ones at the arcade. But they will kill your back. Yeah, but they're, it's really fun. I love that the youngest really one here is like the full arcade guy. I love yeah. that. <laughs> My family awesome. loves buying them too. I think we're we have three more on the way. Nice. Or something. I That's think awesome. my mom got Dig Dug. Um, I think she got the Killer Instinct one. Wow. And then I love Killer Instinct. I think she got the Turtles one. If I'm the four player one, the Turtles. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. There is a new company. Um, the only thing I've seen most recently is there's a company called Unico. I think it's U N I C O, huh? and they created um, candy cabs similar to like what Arcade One Up has done, which is a yeah. style of cab. Yeah, they're like the Japanese. Yeah, uh, they don't come preloaded with games, but they're basically in the style. And I think you can insert like an SD card. I'm I'm not sure on all that, but th those are pretty awesome. Those just dropped like last month. I, I, I did still you need see to get one of them? No, they look pretty sick. Have you seen them though? I think I know. Is it the one they kind of look like Astro City ones? Yeah. Yes. I need an Astro City one. Yep. They look exactly like yeah. Astro Cities. They're pretty awesome looking. I we just, were trying to get them to SoCal. Actually, we reached out to them. No word back. They're in Kansas. This is, this is your chance. Yeah, yeah. They're in, <laughs> they're in Kansas City, so it's a long way for them. Wow. But they were interested. I just uh, awesome. I just sold yeah. an arcade one up yesterday, funny enough. But the guy, shout out, his name's Freddie. He watches the podcast. Funny yeah. enough, literally I had a uh, on offer up, I had an arcade one up, and I'm responding to the guy, and he's like, random question. You kind of talk like this guy riff. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> that's me. So he might help me out with like a mod. I might get one modded. Do you have any modded of them? No. You just no. play them straight. You know what? One of mine never worked. I still haven't gotten a replacement. Which one My is it? Buck Hunter. I got a Buck Hunter one. Never worked out of the box. That's a fun game. Yeah. I was so disappointed. The guns would not calibrate. And I contacted them and like, I just forget, I always forget to respond like back mm. to emails. And, uh, they're like, oh, like well, you can return it. But that was like six months ago. So. <laughs> that's always the bummer about stuff like that. It's like, no, for, you can return it. No worries. But that's where they get you because 90% yeah. of people aren't going to want to put an arcade one back in a box and somehow and get all this. Oh, my God. The yeah. shipping on that thing must be so expensive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they would cover it. But again, even just the work of putting it back, putting in, it back in a you box. You almost feel like, hey, yeah. pay me for my time if I do that. Now, you, now you, Chris, you have like older arcades. How difficult is it to find somebody that knows how to work on the, the mechanics of those things? Arcade machines are actually pretty simple machines, like the older ones. You you really only have like four pieces to them. You have a CRT TV, you have the boards, you have a power supply, and then you have the chassis, which basically connects from the board to the back of the CRT. They're big. They look like there's a lot in there, but there's really only four pieces, so they're not too, too difficult. But as far as like changing out chassis is a real pain, changing out monitors is a real pain. Power supply is not too difficult. Boards are pretty easy, but... 
uh, like pinball machines. Oh my gosh, forget it. Oh, they are oh like, I, I saw you on your story the other day. You were working on one. I fixed that Street Fighter Two pin. I know. I got the car. There's a car smash feature in nice. the Street Fighter Street Two Fighter pin. How, how many yeah. hours did you put on? I forgot what it said. Oh my gosh, I was working. I started at nine in the morning, and I think I got it working by like five or six in the afternoon. I dedicated oh. my whole day to that. It was actually pretty fun working on that pinball machine. Wow. I I am as basic as it gets with pinball machines and miraculously, you were there when I bought the thing. Um the, you pay? Uh, 3,500. Okay. Yep. Uh, but it's, uh, there was only two video game pinball machines. There was a Mario and there was a Street Fighter. Like Gottlieb? Gottlieb made both. Mm, yeah. Dang. You, you, could, you could rack your brain trying to think of another video game pinball machine. There's none. Wow. None ever came out. What's your favorite the, pinball machine? Black Knight 2000. Mine's Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone's good too. Dang. Yeah, Black Knight 2000. You like music. Check out Black Knight 2000 sometimes. It's sick. Oh, it has the best audio of any pin really? ever. It is oh. so good. <laughs> audio, audio and pinball machines are so Oh, the wild. audio is the best ever. Wow. All right, guys. If you guys haven't got your tickets yet at SoCal Gaming Expo, I want to say be there for June 8th and June 9th of this year. And I'm telling you right now, the tickets will be available until the date. Of and the event. Yeah. vendors too. We still have vendor boots. Blake's vending. Yeah, let's there. go. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been putting them in the, the our description for the link. So guys, just go get them. It's gonna be fun. You're gonna have all this for there. So, thanks. All right, uh, Chris. I know the other day you and Blake had a crazy story. I want you guys to be the ones to lead it. It was at an estate sale for a very notable developer. Let's let you guys get into it. You you tell the story. Um. So there was an estate sale that. The pictures looked amazing. There was only like a bunch of video games. I like, remember that. And uh, I was scrolling through the pictures, and uh, we were we had to be the first ones in line. There's like if you're not, you're not going to get any of the good yeah. stuff, obviously. And Chris it, had sent me a picture of in the corner of one of the images. There, there was a street sign, right, and it was blurry. And I was like, I swear to God, I drove past that today, like. Like, cause I had done some investigating we'll, earlier we'll in the day. Re recognizance. Yeah, we'll yeah. drive around. And, so yeah, to uh, make it clear for the audience, what you guys will do sometimes is see the pictures, see if there's any indications yeah. of where this estate sale might be mm -hmm. before they drop the address, cause they don't drop the address till that morning. Mm -hmm. If you can go camp out the night before, yeah. right? We'll go on Google Maps. You've done it with us <laughs> too, Curtis. I did it the other day with Blake. <laughs> Curtis and I have like gotten on the phone. We've gone. We've Seriously? we've seen. Yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> I love it. You guys are psychopaths, psycho psycho bro. Yeah. Yeah. We would. See see a picture of a car and then remember we went on it was a yellow van and we went on google maps and we saw from dude the it was aerial, across the way from a drainage uh the la river and then it was like okay let's just follow it and find the blue van and find the fence we found it and i was like we got it we're gonna be there first yeah. and we were <laughs> and mind you we're not the only ones that do this it's funny because we'll show up and then somebody hey. else will stroll in and they're like how'd you find it and we tell them and they're like oh we found the saw the same yeah. clue so and, other people are doing it too. And, and we stated mm -hmm. this before like the california game for estate sales is cutthroat um you have to do anything you can to try to be at least first top 10. 10. Add an advantage. Top 10. Yeah, top first 10. 10. That's actually why I don't do estate sales is I don't have that cutthroat mentality when it comes to hunting. And I know I wouldn't do well in that scene. I'd be too like, oh, was that yours? Like, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, buddy. I, I'm the same way with you on that. Because like, I'm all, I'm all going around. I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to touch anybody. I, I mean, it's still up. very friendly with the people that are there generally. Although yeah. I have seen some instances where some, some fights kind of almost break out. We've never had any issues. We'll, we'll finish that story. So, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So <laughs> I I find the house at like 930 at night and I was like, well, I don't want to leave. So I set out my placeholder. I stayed there overnight, slept in my car, <laughs> woke up at like... I Chris, slept in my Chris, car too. Did Chris keep you warm? <laughs> no, I was in my car. He was in front of me. <laughs> um, we I woke up. We, uh, we were first in line. We go... We start digging. We get some, like so, like most of the stuff that we wanted to. We missed the one really good box, of course. The Sega stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, the Sega yep, I remember stuff. That. And uh, we we left, and then we came back on the last day that was like getting hosted, and we went and got like there there was a box of like paperwork that they were asking like 150 on the first day, and we we're like eh, I don't really know what this is, and then uh, there was a box of like Tandy stuff. And Tandy, which is what we talked about, arcade type stuff. Yeah, it's like old computers, computer stuff. Computer stuff. Color, yeah, yeah. color computers, they call them Coco computers. Coco 3, yeah. yeah. And uh, so we get it for like pretty cheap compared to what they were asking for on like the first day. Okay. 
and we start going through and I'm going through the paperwork and it's all like the original code to like Defender, like Crystal Quest for Game Boy, um, like Rampage for Tandy, like just like all of these, like the original code for the games. That's and crazy. I was like, whoa. Yeah, this so the, is insane. the guy was a game developer. His name was Steve Bjork, mm -hmm. B-J-O-R-K. Developed games in the 80s, 90s. Um, and there was another one that was in there that you didn't mention, which was actually he started developing for uh, Nintendo later in his career. Oh and so there was the code that was in there was for Pitfall 2, That's the crazy. NES game, which was a, I had to look it up because I was like, Pitfall 2. I Super was like, Pitfall? No. no, no, it was no, just no. Pitfall 2. And I was like, wait, that game came out. And then I actually texted it to Lance, and Lance was like, no, I don't think that game ever came out. You look it up, there's Wikipedia of Pitfall 2 NES. It was an unreleased uh, game that never came out. Mm -hmm. So he That's why the, I was confused. That's why I said Super Pitfall. because Yeah, no, was, that's what yeah. I thought at first, too. I was like, oh, maybe Super Pitfall for... Uh, NES, they have a Super Pitfall in NES. Yeah, no, this was... Well, maybe it was Super Pitfall 2. That's what it is. It was, yeah, I think Super it was Super Pit Pitfall 2. I would have to yeah. check. Not Pitfall 2 for Atari. Super Pitfall 2 for NES. There is a, like a Wikipedia page. And so the original code was there, printed out. And by um, the way, yes, yeah, Super Pitfall is Someone NES. the day before had found the... The cart for it. There was a cartridge that was in there. They found in the it on back the of second a closet. Day, a, a, a prototype? Prototype. Yeah, prototype. No of an unreleased no. game. Yeah, so we missed that. No. But we did get, I mean, so basically, you know, at the estate sale, it's done by the family. The family is allowing them to sell this stuff, right? So it's all his development code. They knew what he did for a living. Right, obviously. they knew what he did for a living, so it's all passed out. It's out to the public. And um, the bin that we got must have been like, three maybe 300 floppy disks of uh just all these games that he developed all the source code and the interest in why some of them are so cool is we, we did reach out to like some of the the facebook groups uh there's like a trs80 there's a um, coco computer facebook groups and we shared some pictures of this stuff and they all knew who steve bjork was from like going to conventions in the eighties and stuff. And that's a very like, Tiny it's not group. a group that I'm that familiar with. I was going to say TRS 80 and stuff like that is very, they're very tight knit, very ex obscure. Yeah. Yeah. And so they were, you know, of course, very excited about it. Um, the, the, uh, they, they wanted us to initially kind of like donate the stuff to a museum. They didn't know who you guys were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't cause the waxers for nothing. <laughs> um, but there was obviously a lot of interest in the stuff. So we've decided that we were going to we're going to put it up for auction was the best way route to do that. So we do have an auction coming up for mm -hmm. this stuff in Ooh. February. In February. Yeah, we went to an actual auction company. So it's probably going be when this is release so yeah so they will go up for auction we figured you know listen we're open, not going to just necessarily donate the stuff but it's out there to the public we'll put it out at auction at a one dollar start and people could, you know by all means can buy it you so. don't have to you don't owe any the first people to tell people to donate are always the people who don't own it <laughs> so it's like <laughs> you didn't pay money and go scalp a neighborhood and, and stalker style find the estate sale <laughs> yeah i had some i had a couple of people hit me up because there was some people giving us a little bit of a like, oh, like a little bit of pushback in the chat because we weren't a part of the chat for that long. You know what I mean? Got it. And I had two people that were like moderators in the group hit me up and they're like, don't listen to them. Like, like Steve Bjork would not have released that stuff. He didn't release it on purpose and he didn't give his source code out because he was a very private person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. and, and it ended up being cool with all of them. I think the initial pushback was that they felt like, oh, you're just in this group to kind of like. Ho like hawk your stuff flex and like yeah and like you're just trying to sell it to us and i i commented in a nice way it was nice i was like listen i'm not here to hype this up it's not a hype train you guys as the group are the most ones that would be interested yeah, in you guys stuff. are if the you ones you don't want to know about it okay well then i guess you didn't want us to even tell you that we found it kind of thing and it was fine it ended up being fine by the end but there was a pushback from a few people that felt that and i get it at the end of the day you know that is a very tight-knit group this guy was like a friend of theirs that passed so there was some sentimental with okay, this, I get that. this particular guy so, so you're, under, trying, you're balancing business and trying to show respect and you know yeah and, and it was not like i also let that group know i was like listen i own video game stores run expos too i'm not just some like estate sale guy that happened to find this i understand your guys sentiment for this for this do yeah. you know is it am i just gonna say here you go it's for free now no not necessarily i had to pay for it we paid money for it so like i said the first people to tell you to donate it are never the ones who have anything into it you know it's 
from yeah. the other side of the internet. Hey, that would be really cool. I get it. You want to respect the community because it's something that's special to the community, but there's still real life that goes involved with what you guys did to get it. So I get it. Yeah. It's I, can't exactly believe, I can't believe nobody else picked it up. It was there the last day. The last I know day. we saw it on the first day too, and we didn't. We just didn't know what it was. It looked so random. Like it was just random floppy disks, like with words written on it. Like it wasn't like didn't look like games or anything. And and what the the most interest in what could be on there is undeveloped games is what people are absolutely in. games that he had been working on. And apparently, what there was rumor that he was working on some games that were never released. Kept one. Mm. Ooh. You did have one that had like, two what? games that were under. <laughs> wait, 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 we're busy. Chris is like, wait, I thought, I, thought, I thought we split it. <laughs> Which ones did you keep? Um, it's one that has two games under development. It's called Croids and like New Something, but they had never released. Now, wow. you guys have like a really interesting relationship when it comes to buying and selling. Like, how do you guys like really split everything up? We split big hauls. Anything like massive. Um, uh, um, sometimes we'll like split like smaller hauls, but usually it's like like well, hundred VHS tapes or like like a yeah. hundred DVDs. Same thing, Ricky. Is that I where yeah. you yeah. lose your rock paper scissors battle? Yes, every time. It, 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 it actually, <laughs> every every works, time. It works really well for Chris. Um, I don't know. We we enjoy hunting <laughs> together a lot, and yeah. we we complement each other. We both have good you know eyes for things. Now, does there get times when Blake's mitts get a little? <laughs> A little, a little bit competitive. grabby, you know, when I'm at the flea market and like sometimes there's hands and I have to swat his hands away from picking out of the bins I'm looking in. Yeah, that does happen. Yeah. But in, yeah. A, in a friendly That's way. That's part of yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Every once, I mean, we do the same thing. We'll split big lots. If there's yeah. ever a time where like, I'll say it's like, especially the times where like they're, uh, they're asking a price that like may not even be necessarily high, but that like, I don't know what's in there. Like, I don't know if there's good stuff in there. And they're like, you take it all or nothing. And I'll be like, Ricky, like. If we split it, then it's a, if it ends up not being anything, you know, cool or unique or valuable or something we want to keep, obviously, then it's like at least the yeah. burns less, yeah. yeah, you know, because you split it. So I get we, it. We try to reciprocate like finding deals too. Yeah. Yeah. Like if for a while I felt like you had found a bunch of deals and I was like, dang, I owe you some deals. Like, thank you so much for bringing me in <laughs> yeah. on these big hauls. So then I find a deal. It's not like, oh shit, well, I'm going to go over there and just go buy this stuff. Yeah. I'll be like, Hey man, there's a good deal. I just found you. That was Ricky with, with the storage locker hall. I feel like once when I got that one through Ricky, I'm like, all right, he owes me for a while. This was a good one. <laughs> yeah, like, that was a good that's one. That's the way we feel. Yeah. It's more like, all right, you owe me for the next one, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. fun. So I know that, like, at what extent, because I know you said you sleep in your car, like, how many times do you think you've done that? Oh, a lot. I don't have a home. (laughs) Way to call me out, man. No, no, because I mean, like, uh, it was funny because when I did find one of those estate sales, like, like, prior to this, like, not too, like, not not too long ago, like, probably like a month ago, um, I had messaged uh, Blake the address and he goes, I go, yeah, I'm going to wake up at four. And he goes, I'm just going to sleep there. I can't wake up at four. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, it was when I got there at four in the morning, it was freezing. Don't I forget. got two blankets in my car. Yeah. For that <laughs> yeah. But look at his mask, man. <laughs> like he ain't got that extra cheese. Don't, like, got the extra skin. Don't forget yeah. Blake's age. He's at the age still where like you can if you if you go to bed, you're not going to wake up early. So you're better off pulling an all nighter. That's yeah. still like, a young age I'll, perception. I'll, put a timer on my phone for every 30 minutes so I don't fully go to sleep when I'm at the estate sales. Yeah, it's a lot of... I've only done it a couple times with you it sleeping sucks. in the car. It sucks. It sucks. And I'm, a lot, I'm double the age of him and I'll tell you, like, when I, it's funny too because I tell my <laughs> wife, I'm like, hey, she, it'll be like midnight and she's like, where are you going? And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to let you know this is kind of weird, but going to an estate sale. <laughs> What's I'm her sleeping. name, Chris? No, I'm What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm, going, I'm sleeping in my car and at first she's like, what? But of course she knows what I do and I don't do it that often but it is a lot of work. Usually he'll just meet me in the morning. I try to just send Blake <laughs> and be like, put a box down. <laughs> but that, like, line holders that doesn't work out. <laughs> no, yeah, imagine, people don't like that. People no, but imagine like like, it, like she goes, uh, why are you here at this house this long, Chris? And then, yep. uh-oh. <laughs> no, um, I know you guys don't do estate sales at all, but you guys also go to like very unique houses. Do you say, do you think you guys have like found like something that's been like you've never seen before? Something that, you know, that has super crazy... As far as like anything else, I feel like most of our big finds have been from storage units or or swap meets. I've never. I, yes, we've gone to like the abandoned homes and we found cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. never anything where I was like, "Ooh, this is gonna change." You know, the perception of us as a collector. Like, this yeah. is the one. Our but, friends had the big one. I don't know if you even knew them at the time. Our friends at the time, Corbin and Amy, they went to this house that was. Oh, 
dis- I'm talking, it made the news, like local news. It was a disgusting home that was just full of roaches. I mean, you're literally sticking your hands in a foot of filth full of roaches and stuff to pull out nothing but sealed games. Just for endless, endless, endless sealed games. All the Zeldas, all the GameCube, all the Xbox, all the, the Wii stuff, just everything sealed, all heavy hitters. Just And they were just doing it in, in you know, a pair of Crocs and short shorts and because it was just a random thing that happened and they ended up making the news and everything. So that's the kind of stuff that I strive for with that stuff. But I yeah. feel like at this point, we're blessed enough that we know so much of the community that so many people, we kind of get leads, kind of get tipped off. It's yeah. been a while yeah. since it's been yeah. like the, oh, I had no idea type yeah. of thing. But it, not necessarily like you finding it, but maybe like someone showing you something that you've never seen before. Like, do you have like any like, like recollection at somebody's house like that? I mean, yeah, more at Archon's house. I was going to say Archon. I have a buddy named Archon who uh, runs the world of art of Nintendo Power. You know, uh, he runs all that. And we went to his house and he was like, Ricky and I have been big sign guys. We love signs. But his signs were like the next level signs to where he had this uh, Power Glove Mattel sign. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this thing is insane. It's huge. It lights up crazy. I'm like, where did you get this? He's like, yeah, this like, you know, I found this guy who was like the dealer for it. And he's like. I'm like, that is so rare. He's like, yeah, you see those two of them? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, that's the only two in existence. So I was like, there you go. That's why I've never seen it before. So stuff like that. I think if you go to those really high-end collectors, people like Gamer Aimer, like she has, it's those people who have like the big ones. That kinda... we, I mean, we did get the cool thing. Uh, the thing I actually sold, sold to Chris that he has at his store now, the Knights. That that's a awesome. one of like. Five, apparently. Yeah, one of five. Yeah. Man, I shouldn't have sold that. And if I he waxed like, you. I was like, I, I, <laughs> just, get waxed, Ricky. Wax, wax, wax. <laughs> you, 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 you think, think, think Griff and my wife, they're like, you got to get rid of that. I'm like, no, no. No, well, thank you, because that thing is incredible. And I know you had some other people that were in. Me and Ricky just made it in his backyard and said it was official. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess uh, like his backyard is your backyard, kind of, in the sense that he could just go and visit your store. You know what I mean? It's yeah, very it's close. True. That's true. We can look at it. But I was going to say, like, as I've collected more and more, I do find myself going for more of like the super, super, super unique things. The one of one things in particular, mm. which is like what Archon collects. Like yeah. All that art of Nintendo Power stuff in artwork in general is just one of one. Bro, he has the folders they would give the Nintendo employees. The counselors. Their one, guidebooks right? for when people would call the counselors for like what to say. So I'd be like, oh, you're on Zelda level two. Okay, what you need to do is defeat this boss and then go here. And it's like, dude, he has those books. And I'm like, that's freaking, he has other sketches when they were bored and they would draw, you know, pictures of tech tights. Crazy. That was cool. But I, and I've just to, to spin off of that, but like I dove into that video game art stuff recently. Oh yeah. And it is incredible. There's a whole little tiny little group of people. Pull out that your are, wallet, bro. I know. You, you got to pull out your wallet for this stuff. Like original cover art for like a Nintendo game. is like ten, your ankles There's like 10 point. grand for that point. I know. You know, for that stuff. But I did buy my first art piece, which <gasps> is the cover of Predator Concrete Jungle on PS2, where he's holding the skull. Oh, that's a cool one. And I bought oh. the, it's the original line art drawing of that. How much? Uh, I bought it for 800 bucks. Okay. Which I thought was pretty good, and I love the cover art of that. It's I love a good Predator, game, it's and a it's a good game. game. The guy was over in, I think he was in like Egypt or something, and he shipped it over to me. Maybe wow. France. Yeah, it came overseas. So I did. I did dive into that. It's a pretty unique. Like, you want to go way out into the realm of video game collecting? That's like the deep. That's end out of there. It. Yeah. yeah, it's out there. But I, I, it's a pretty awesome little community in there too. I yeah, like that. Definitely stuff that I like when I saw Archon stuff, dude. I was like in awe. I was so shocked at all of it. It's so a jaw dropper. Anyway, I know we call you a certain name. Please don't go too much into detail into the dirty part of it. But we call you the Smut Peddler for a reason. Um, one thing <laughs> we're talking about Blake. We're talking about Blake, the mop, the redhead, the ging, everything that we love about him. Yes. Um, kind of explain like when you go to these estate sales, you pick up a lot of that stuff. Smut is the word we'll use kindly here. Smut, so, yes, don't, yeah. so we don't yes. get demonetized. So, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why. A lot of uh it used to I used to be able to sell it on eBay. Um just like I would get my listings taken down every once in a while. Sometimes I'd acquire a three day suspension, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. kept listing that stuff on eBay, but it would sell for seventy, eighty, one hundred and fifty dollars. I'm getting it for like 
50 cents a dollar you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah. like no one wants this stuff anyway except weirdos and the people buying it <laughs> you, know, you just lost your just audience lost there your whole <laughs> clientele dude it's <laughs> over unsave the item from ebay <laughs> yeah. he's over. like delete the uh, it's, it's over ben's gonna stop uh, buying from you <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh uh, no it's man. mostly tony to be honest <laughs> oh, yeah tony's big but I, I, I honestly i haven't been able to sell it that much anymore because it just gets taken down um ebay's caught onto it pretty well you know what Blake, I'm gonna say um, it's probably better for you. If you yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, some of this stuff is worth, you know, vintage, hard to find smut. Yeah, call it. It is worth. <laughs> there it is. Some there of it, if you can find an outlet market. to sell it, there is uh, so much value in that. Mm -hmm. I have a few listings up myself and, on eBay that have kind of gotten through the bots. And like, I sold a movie the other day. It's a play on Tomb Raider. Called Jewel Raider. Boy. Yeah, called, yeah. What was it called? Jewel Raider. Yeah, yeah. That, we don't have to say too much about it. Jewel the Raider, and there was one called title. Boom Raider. You asked the question. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's, guess how much that DVD sold for? $69. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I don't know. <laughs> the kid in you, man. <laughs> $200. Wow. wow. $200 for that DVD. Yeah. yeah. But when uh, eBay yeah. gets you guys on like... I'm sorry for what listening mom and dad on this one. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. But I mean like it is business, right? So yes. um, uh, another aspect is eBay shuts, your down, uh, shuts down your store. How detrimental is it for you? Oh, it costs me thousands. Really? Like over... the uh, I got a 10-day ban and that 10 days cost me about two grand. Wow. Yeah. Like 2500 <laughs> Yeah, like, so it's a lot they of, haven't been doing it as much recently. Most no. of they've been taking the listings down. We do, we try not to list a ton of that stuff. We try to follow the guidelines with eBay. We, I had listed some stuff way back, and you had too from like a lot that I think when I did the VHS store clear out. Yes, if you remember that story, there was a huge section of this stuff, ah. and so I was like, oh, and it was like old. I was like, all right, I'll just take it. It was included with everything, so I was like, now what? What do I do? And so we tried doing some stuff on eBay, and that's when we were getting the bands and stuff like that. Stop doing it though. <laughs> Bunch, hey, of, bunch of perverts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'll take this. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. What is in your carry-on? <laughs> um, yeah, like the El Monte estate sale that we went to. Yeah, it was, the house was just full of VHS, right? Yeah. The abandoned house we went to in our abandoned house video. Yeah, oh, that was rough God. too. That Probably hundred. Riff was wow. doing everything he could them? on no. reels. <laughs> on reels. Oh. On reels. Yes, we left them. They were gross, dude. We left them. I don't want that. <laughs> <sicko>. <laughs> we got nowhere to put Gosh. those things. Let's get over here. Right, over here. Like, where was that? Where was that? <laughs> 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 okay. All right. Well, it's perfect. This Chris has been waiting for this topic for a very long time. It's going to be ranking condiments, guys. Let's go. We, oh, this, I am excited for this. This was one of the first things suggested to us from Chris. Like. <laughs> Day one of the podcast, I'm like, hey, we're going to start ranking stuff. He's like, are we going to rank condiments at some time? I'm just curious. I mean, we don't have to. But I'm very curious because I haven't seen what Curtis threw up here. I don't even eat condiments, so I'm not going to be ranking this. Yeah, he eats like, uh, have you seen him eat? Like two-year-old. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. I eat like four-year-old. I even got called out for it in the comments. And I was like, you know what? I do eat like four-year-old. my kids called you out when we went to dinner <laughs> or lunch. <laughs> They're like, you idiot. Yeah. Well, you're getting grilled cheese. Eat your food, <laughs> Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> that's always brick. Uh, that's, yeah. your, that's how Retro Rick eats, too. If you ever hear Retro Rick eats, he's, he's going to die young for sure. Everywhere you go, it's like <laughs> whatever he orders, it's followed by, but do not give me any vegetables. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Always. I forgot about that. Yeah. Poor guy. Oh, man. I'll right. take care of your family. So, right. Blake, you're the homie here today. Give me a number between one and a thousand. I have just 10, I mean, but here we go. Let me hear it. Seven. One and 10. Yes. One, seven. All right. We're going to go with red. Sick. Just like S. your hair. Here we go. Relax, Blake. Whoa. Jeez. S, Whoa. S tier. Whoa. Hey, slow down. Ketchup is S? S. Oh, yes. So we have to say explain. what it is. Ketchup has been pulled up for the audio listeners. Yeah. Explain. Why? It's just so good. What's, it, what's, like, what's the number one go-to for ketchup? Like a burger. It's got to throw it on a burger. The way he said it. <laughs> this is when he felt like a 75-year-old man. Like a burger? Yeah, like, yeah. Back in Nam, I used to eat that. You know? <laughs> Throw it on a burger, yeah. Okay. Anything else on your burger, or just ketchup? I'm a, I'm a plain, plain cheeseburger with ketchup. Okay, that's it. So that's about five years old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're a little bit past Curtis over there. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. What's your rating? Oh man, ketchup is. Ugh. I used to like it when I was a kid, and maybe with French fries, it's okay if there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. But I would much rather prefer ranch or something nope. else. Ra oh, any I other ones? Yeah, oh. Anything else? Sorry. I'm, I'm, I hardly ever go to ketchup with anything anymore. I'm going to give it a solid D. Wrong. Okay. Way down there. <laughs> Wrong. <D>. Wrong. <laughs> I'm going to go straight C. I'm sorry. 
I, I pretty much only like it on a burger. I don't really care for it on anything else. Straight up, not my favorite. Ricky? I'm going to go for a B. I love, you guys ever tried french fries with ketchup, but you throw a ton of pepper in it? It's delicious. Technically, that doesn't count, Ricky, because that's adding a different ingredient. Is that, a, con- is that a considered condiment, though? You ha- you c- we're talking about it in its form. Awesome. Like, if mustard comes up, I can't be like, oh, well, I like mustard. If you add this to it. Okay, it's not okay, much. okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll but, still, I'll still but, give it a B. Hey, we're not gonna lie with the pepper; it's super good. <laughs> I know, I'm like, it's all good. <laughs> we'll go on to the next you one. See B F. He's on yeah, it. right in the middle. He's Let's on do it. it. I keep double clicking. Blue cheese. Yes, sir. Who's starting? Not me. I'll start. E. Have you ever thought of what it would taste like to like <laughs> lick a donkey's butthole? <laughs> That's what I picture blue cheese as. It is the worst. <laughs> When people eat it in front of me, I want to put my foot in their face. It smells terrible. Like, stop making me smell that, and you smell my foot. (laughs) Like, this is not a way to eat food. It's a solid F. (laughs) I'll follow this up. It is a solid S for me. What? I love oh. blue cheese. I was about to say, what kind so of person much. likes it? Oh my gosh. Oh. I could put chicken tendies. <laughs> I love it on salad. Tendies? Oh. Yeah. I love it with I love it with French fries. You're wrong. I put blue cheese on yeah. I have to yell one thing. Cheese. I have to yell one thing. Ben, where do you rate this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was gonna say you aged yourself because it's normally an old person. It might be, <laughs> but I love it. I absolutely love it. Ben said F. Though. Oh, God. Yeah. F. Blake? F. F. Gross. Let's go. Yes. There's nothing Gross. worse than confusing this with ranch. Oh, that's... worse. This is an F for me, too. Dang. Even with buffalo wings, nobody likes blue cheese. Dang. <laughs> buffalo wings, it is so good. Oh, you guys dragged my F with <laughs> that. <is solid. laughs> Bro, that's not even going to make an E. That's like an F straight stuff. <laughs> okay, we'll just go right to the bottom. I, a little bit off the bottom. <laughs> The F's, the F's Mid a little bit off. Mid F. He's gonna hold on to that one. All right, we're gonna go on to our next one. It's gonna be A one sauce, guys. Ooh, A one. Yes. I'm gonna go. Your a steak uh, shouldn't need A one. I I agree. It's true. I'm gonna go a solid B because I admit I'm the kind of guy. I'm not gonna eat it, but like I could totally get a bunch on my spoon and just take a sip. I love it's it. Pretty I think though. it's good. It's pretty good. I go B. I'll a give good, it a B. A good steak sauce. Yeah. Chris is going to drag it down because he's it's pissed, right? So. No, I, I do not like it. It tastes like orange peels to me. I'm like, why would you want this? That's because you have blue cheese on your tongue <laughs> still. It's got, like a, it's got like a citrus taste to me when I eat it. I don't understand why you put this with steak. Steaks should taste awesome, in my opinion. I agree. So I, agree. I To me, it's it's not the worst, but I'll put it at an E. I could tolerate it. Wow, e that was me. not high. But No, yes. it's pretty bad. Ricky, the fate holds in your hands. I'm going to say a B as well. I like it. But he yeah. said as well. Like he said B before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all these guys said B. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. So then we will. That's go. a good ranking. Solid C. Yeah. So right now, yeah, ketchup yeah. is in the lead. Oh, I don't know. Go, go ketchup. Yeah. Guys, I don't know much about condiments, man. I just, I was, I was winging it. So here we go. I better go down soon. Horseradish sauce. Okay, so remember how I said it's like blue cheese is like link, licking a donkey's butthole? <laughs> this is licking a donkey's butthole after it diarrheas blue cheese. No, this is a horse, bro. <laughs> this is bottom of the barrel. When people eat horseradish, I like feel like I need to pray for them. That's disgusting. Horseradish is nasty. Not Horseradish sounds like a, de- a disease a horse has on its nuts. <laughs> Like legit, you got a case of horseradish. You've seen a horseradish, right? And it looks like straight F. No, it's, it's oh pink. It's like a ball. I wasn't ready for Ew! This. Solid F. F. Easy F. Blake's, okay. I'm good with Blake on this. Yeah. One. Easy oh, F. Man. Let me guess. Chris is S tier. <laughs> oh, you I better not. Absolutely love horseradish. Oh, <laughs> Do you really? I put it on so- like sausage, like kielbasa. I see you crying. I'm getting tears over what you were saying about the donkey's butt. <laughs> Um, I love it. Uh, I love horseradish <laughs> sauce with this is mixing it, but like in cocktail sauce, but it is like horseradish sauce, like with shrimp. So, wait, what I thought you were gonna say with blue cheese. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, <laughs> what do you put this on? What yeah. actually? I'd give it an A, it's not my favorite. It's what, not so, S-tier. what does it go on that makes it good? Oh, I put it on sausage. I, I eat it with um, like tuna, like sashimi tuna, I did, like deep sea fishing, like tuna okay. it's good yeah. instead of wasabi. It is amazing. <laughs> That's Ricky? a weird mix with tuna. <laughs> How about uh, you? Spicy. Horseradish. I yeah. actually like, I don't mind horseradish, but I never had the condiment. Is uh, it pretty much tastes the same? Um, Yeah, similar. It's like a creamy version of it. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, that's made it even worse. <laughs> the best part's like the crunch. Uh, right. I guess I'll give it a, a D. 
All right, we'll just bring it up so Chris doesn't get all upset. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to go on to a good one. Good grief. Oh, Frank's Red, Red Hot. Yep. Blake, you start. I love hot sauce. Is it um, hot sauce in general or just Frank's? Uh, I just, I mean, we're not sponsoring Frank's, but uh, it's just hot jo- sauce. Just hot sauce. Straight yeah. up like wait, a wait, tapatio. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, are, there, are there any other hot sauces there on There is. Here? There is one, and it's... Uh, no, then we have to go Frank's then. Then it is Frank's. It is Frank's. Frank's. Yeah, it's a Frank's. big difference. Yeah. Ooh. I, I love Frank's, but... It's not my favorite hot sauce, so I, I'm gonna give it like a B. I'm literally at a B too. I mean, yeah. you have ranked the exact same on the last few. Solid yeah. B. Same, same, same exact sentiment. Like I have you, one you that's way above it. Both have the same worst taste buds together, oh, dude. <laughs> Easy, they're horseradish <laughs> and blue cheese. <laughs> what are you talking about? Over there? <laughs> the two of those together sound horrible. Oh. Uh, Frank's for me is like my least favorite hot sauce. I don't like it. It's it's watery. It's vinegary. I love watery <laughs> I, hot sauce. I, I do water. not like yeah. it. Um, I can tolerate it, but I'm give it an E. Mm. I do not like it. Okay. No. Well, we have very different tastes. I know. <laughs> Completely. Wow. <laughs> I'll give it a C minus, closer to a D. It's it's no Tapatio or Cholula. It ain't no Louisiana. Oh, I love Cholula, bro. Cholula, so Louisiana yeah. is, is really good. That's the best hot sauce. Wait, what did you say, Ricky? On yours? Sorry. Let's just go with D. D. All right, I'll just bring it down to a C for you. All right, we're gonna go on our next one. It's gonna be Thousand Island. Ooh, oh, that I is do it. like oh, Thousand Island. Let's go to these guys. It's a very white person thing. <laughs> I don't like Thousand Island. Oh. What's not your... My, not my thing. I'm going to give it like an E. E? Oh, yeah. all right. I, I love like the these taste of it. Yeah. When I was growing up, I thought it was so disgusting. And like Thousand Island on a salad is pretty disgusting to yeah, me. Yeah. But sure. if you put it on, what do I put? Oh, you know what I love it on is a, um, uh, like a Reuben. If you have a corned oh, beef yeah, yeah. Reuben, Thousand Island just makes that sandwich. It is so good. Um, what else do you put it on? I think just Rubens. That's it. That's pretty good. I don't know what else you Ricky use it for. Ricky puts it on his cousin Ruben. <laughs> but I'd, give a, I'd give it a good B. I do like it. It's I don't pretty like good. It. All right, I'm a little. I'm more with you on this one. I'll give it a B. I do like myself some Thousand Island. I like it on, actually, even on some burgers. Burgers, it's some good. Burgers, yeah, it's good. Burgers I, I and actually Rubens. like it on salads too. I don't. I do. So B for me. I'm giving it an A. Ooh. Dude, it's it's the spread sauce from In and Out pretty much. That's I don't like true. the In and Out spread either. I dude, I eat the fries Not with that thing. with the spread. Oh, it's so you good. know what's interesting though? In and Out, I don't get spread. I get mustard and pickle only. Nothing else. I get you don't like this spread with ketchup. I do. It's just a lot. Is child. it just Thousand Island? It's Thousand Island. It's, 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 it's Thousand Island. Like, ex, like you can just like extra pickle on it. I feel like they mix like uh, relish into it or something like that. Doesn't it have like yeah, it pickles has a little, in it? Maybe yeah. Yeah. that's pickle. The little things pickled. They maybe, pickle. they, maybe they just mix the two. Yeah, maybe. yeah. As you said that, let's just do it. Sweet relish. <laughs> relish. A. Whoa. I love a good old American hot dog overloaded with relish. That is a good taste for me right there. That's a solid A for me. I don't. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> relish in that. Yeah. I, I like relish mixed in with things like tartar sauce and stuff. What like are that. your flavors? <laughs> garbage. <laughs> this is you've said so much garbage food Dude, tonight. <laughs> Chris is like combo. a high end chef somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sauce. But relish by itself does not do it for me. It's a D for me. Not a huge. Oh, that's true because you have to do it by itself. Yeah, by itself, I don't like it. Mixed with stuff, I like. But Blake, I give it a B. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of. It's not my favorite on a hot dog, but I do like relish. I do like. I still can't get over your flavors, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Harder sauce, blue cheese, and horseradish. You freaking disgusting ninety-eight-year-old man. (laughs) Those are his like S A tiers. That's crazy. That's like the stuff my dad used to tell me he was forced to eat at boys' school in the (laughs) forties. He's not from the 40s. Oh, man. <laughs> Ricky? <laughs> I have to put it lower because I wanted it to be high, but I only like it when there's ketchup and mustard on it. Okay. So I have to go for a C on that one for me. I like so it. So that's a case of you needing to mix it with things. I need to mix it with it. something. Otherwise, it's... Got I get it. that. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. All right. That was an island favorite. in the lead right now. Barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. Oh, Is it sweet barbecue sauce? It's just barbecue okay. sauce, honestly, dude. <laughs> Is there another kind of barbecue Can sauce? You can find another picture. <laughs> yeah. Like, Solid A. <laughs> All right, all right. I love barbecue sauce on a burger. I will on a douse burger. it to no end. Hmm. Just <laughs> keep going. Bring me another bottle. Get it down. So good. The audio oh, listeners are going to oh, love Chris's that. Oh, Chris's face right now. I can tell some good's coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's better when I have this with anchovy sauce. <laughs> 
That's so Don't good. Mind the anchovies. <laughs> Stop it! I swear, dude. Oh my oh god. My Lord. Um, I, I, it's not horrible, but I do not like it that much at all. I like it with, um, like ribs. That's about it. Ooh, Even then, yep. I prefer my ribs just like plain, no barbecue. No just, barbecue chicken, huh? No, I don't. Not a big barbecue chicken fan. Dipping sauce, I'm not a big barbecue fan of it. Salad. Barbecue chicken salad's pretty good. Okay. And like barbecue chicken pizza. I can tolerate it. So okay. I would give it, I'll give it a D. Not that low. But <laughs> yeah. it's pretty low. Yeah. I just love how like you and Riff are on both sides of the spectrum. Literally opposite. Yeah. Every single yeah. time. It's, a D. <laughs> it's actually pretty good, D. <laughs> I'm giving it a B. Let's go. Yeah, all right. I, I love barbecue sauce. Makes you, ribs amazing. Ribs. Yep, that's barbecue. that's yeah. the only reason. Yeah. Yeah. Ricky? That's a B for me. All right, all right. Yeah. This would be my only one that I would actually rank. It'd be my A. So. Okay, Kurt, good to know, Kurt. <laughs> That's the only comment hey, you can throw I mean. in your ranking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, build it up more. Build it up higher. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. 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 let's go. Let's no make it the Bring higher. Top tier. No way. <laughs> right now, barbecue's lit. Let's go. Mayo. Let's start on F. 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 Absolutely the best. What is wrong with you? Wait, wait, wait. I got two Fs. All right. Disgusting. The other day, I was eating. My my wife made tacos at home, and I was looking in the fridge. There was no <laughs> salsa. <laughs> go ahead, go on. I, what did I say? <laughs> Nothing, go on. <laughs> I was eating my wife I made tacos. And so I, I went to make them. There was no salsa. I look in the fridge. There was. I was like, man, what am I going to put on these tacos? I You're took, disgusting. I took the mayonnaise. I put the mayonnaise on the taco. It was delicious. You're disgusting. It was Ugh. so good. I could put mayonnaise on anything. That's it is my disgusting. absolute S. What's your wife's name again? Natalie. Natalie, how do you kiss this they, man? They hate me. The nasty flavors on his mouth. <laughs> how is ma you just pulled something off your tongue? <laughs> the video people got to, he just pulled something <laughs> off his tongue. That's a anchovy it's hair. So good. Uh, mayonnaise is my absolute favorite. What'd There's another one. Oh, S. S. Oh, dang. F. Love it. F. Me and Blake F. are F. That is Ricky? disgusting. I actually love it on sandwiches. It's an A for me. Oh, yeah, this is probably going to bring it up. Okay, well, Let's what go. about deviled eggs? That's like one thing I'm, I will tolerate mayo with. I don't like eggs. deviled eggs. I love deviled I eggs. Loved, I like deviled eggs. Yeah. All right, let's get into this. This is like a the opposite of ketchup. Mustard. Who's up first? C. <laughs> just, C? He sounded like he just so just went, right. C. I Chris. wanted to have emotion. <laughs> Chris? There's so many different kinds. Just I mustard. Do like, I do we're not like talking spicy. about Dijon. We're just talking about well, just yellow, Costco. So think of Costco. Yellow like mustard. mustard. Just yellow mustard. So just yellow mustard. Yeah. Um, C. It's okay. Ricky? C. This is Riff's A. Yeah. This is my ass, boys. <laughs> is it really? I freaking love <laughs> mustard, bro. My oh, kids no. love it. Uh, my kids will eat it on toast, bagels, artichokes, toast? anything. Bagels. Artichokes. You want to know what's oh, good about mustard, too? Go look up the, the calories on it. The big fat zero. zero. Yeah, mayonnaise is a lot of calories. And Thousand Island. Uh, mustard. I, when I go to in and out, like I said, mustard and pickle only. Two of my favorite flavors. I love it. Oh, we're going to get burgers Jeez. after. Yeah, I know. We I, do need I'm burgers. actually hungry. I'm pretty hungry. Star this is not helping. <laughs> we're all starting. <laughs> this list is not helping. I'm just thinking of all the food in my head right now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ricky, did you rate it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you did. That's he right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we'll go on to our next one. Classic Ranch. Ooh, ranch. Dang ranch. Who's got it? Who wants Blake. to start it? Uh, it's a C for me. I'm not much of a ranch C. guy. You know what I mean? Dang. Ricky, let's go Ricky next. Ooh, I'm going A. I love ranch. I right. I need fry, fry ah, I need fries with that ranch. <laughs> what <I> <laughs> He's a oh, ranch. Uh it's so good. What's yeah. your favorite <laughs> ranch food? Favorite ranch food? Uh fries, but they're the red Pizza? the red robin fries. Ooh. Oh, pizza. I forgot about that. I wings. do like dunking the pizza with, uh, ran, like, and ranch, like but the, the ranch crispy, it has to be pr crispy pizza. Pizza and ranch is amazing. It is. I was just about to go so lower, but now I'm talked up. I think the food get, hunger is getting to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking C, but now I'm like, dude, ranch is a solid A. Like, I am starving. Let's it, go. Ranch sounds good at an A to me right now. Let's take this to the top. Solid S. I could put it on <gasps> everything. Ooh. I absolutely love ranch. It, that and mayonnaise are my two favorites. That is at the Need top. it to be above barbecue Wild. sauce, because my son and I have a barbecue ranch talk all the time. He loves <laughs> 
<laughs> barbecue. So I l- need that to be above it. So Uh-oh. I still have no respect S. for your food game after this <laughs> night. I'll never respect your food game again. All right. I got time for two more. I don't know if this is considered a condiment, but <laughs> it says it in the list. So, honey. Okay, we'll put it on there. Why not? Um, I love it. You love it? Love Yo, it. Yeah, yeah that's, an Yo, that's an S. That's an S tier for me. Uh, some, uh, some like, uh, like biscuits in the morning. Okay. Like, it goes on like sandwiches. What was your rating? S. S tier. Yeah. Crystal? Yeah. I, I really only put it in coffee. I do like honey and coffee. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else I use. You ever do like a peanut butter jelly, or not peanut butter jelly, but do you ever do like a peanut butter sandwich and put honey on it? Yes. I've had it. Yeah, honey is amazing. I love it. I just don't eat it that much. Do you Um, know it's like one of the worst thing in the world for your teeth? Is it really? They say it's like the most sugar condensed. Oh, it's just pure sugar. Is. Yeah, sick. I should eat pure more. sugar. But it's good for the body. <laughs> it's good for your body. <laughs> it's good for your body. But you it's start gargling. Your it. I would dare I say, don't eat a lot of honey. Just eat it in normal quantity. That's like what people do with avocados. They're like they're healthy, and they eat ninety of them. They're like, why I am I gaining weight? Bad for your teeth. I yeah, know that. But it is supposed to be good for it's you. It's good for you. Yeah, to an extent. Have you yeah, had to honey an butter. It's like huh? a teaspoon. Honey butter. Honey. Butter. I do like honey butter. Okay, I'm gonna rate honey F. Oh, I hate honey. Dang. I don't like it on anything. Dang. I don't eat breakfast either. So, Whoa. yeah, I don't like it on anything. Wow. I don't know. How it's like the only one. On I can't, you guys have said not one thing that I eat. I don't eat anything with it. I'm gonna give it an uh, an A. It's a it's a good A. Honey's amazing. And when I go get acai, I tell them not to put honey on. Oh, I love How it. How about you, Ricky? I'm giving an S. I love honey sticks. Oh, honey sticks honey. are awesome. freaking amazing. I get them at good. Golden West every once in a while. I, I get them at Not Berry Farm. I think that kind of ties a honey with the there. If that ties for the top, there's something wrong. Can I go below F so it goes down? <laughs> <laughs> honey is garb. <laughs> All right, it's got, not even really a condiment, people. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> now you're I'm right, sticking right. to it. No, you're right. You're right. All right, we got time for one more. Uh, it, let's just throw this one up. Tapatio? Sriracha sauce. Oh, oh a, shoot. A tier. S. Oh my gosh. All right. Sriracha is so good. It's, it's all, really solid good. It's not no Louisiana to me, though. <sighs> Louis, Louisiana well, still tops S's? it. Two no. S's? Don't try to drop it no. below honey. No, no, it's uh, S and A. S and A. Yeah. A is de- And I'm you? S. I'm an A as well. Oh. Hey. Sriracha's amazing. You know, I used to love sriracha sauce, but remember when we would get the chicken teriyaki stuff? Oh, I love it on that stuff. Dude, it runs through me, sriracha. <laughs> yeah. It makes me, like, explode. I can't handle it anymore. And then so you have fire butt it. when you do it? Or you yeah, have <laughs> fire butt, just like a meal, like, boom. You're the like, fire. Oh, yeah, it is goners. I don't, none of you have experienced that with it? No. no. No, that's because of all the other crap you're eating. That's what it does to you. Blue I, cheese spreads the cheeks, bro. That's fine. No oh, problem. Papa. Uh, I'm going to give it... They can't win. I got to give oh, it an Oh, that's not fair! No. I got to give it an... I give it an E. That's your exit oh, below. That Let's should go. be like kind of like a B-ish. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to say it though. right now. If yeah. Honey win or won, everyone that listens is going to yeah. be like, you guys are frauds. Hey, can yeah. you put a Cholula up there? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I actually do like Cholula. Cholula's great. Yeah, and, and you guys have like hot buffalo sauce. Uh, as I'm going on the next topic, can you guys rank it real quick? Because I didn't put it on here. Curtis is going for it. Uh, buffalo sauce. Mmm. So buffalo sauce is rough because a little bit too much of it, and I almost can't swallow. Exactly. It's a weird thing. Yeah. When I get too much, bit. I smell it before I go, and I start to like cough up. But if it's just the right amount, it's really good. C for me. Re- okay, C for you. Uh, I'm gonna go B. Using it as your base sauce for a pizza is bomb. Yeah. Is Buffalo Super chicken good. pizza is amazing. So good. Oh my gosh, I'm so Chris, hungry. How I'm not you? a huge fan of it, especially on wings. I don't really like it on wings. Hmm. Um, but tangy. it's not hard. Yeah, it's a little bit tangy. I know what you're talking about. Like, it has to be real light. The, yeah, sometimes dipping like some something in it's good. Uh, C. C for me. All right, all right. By itself, D. Mixed. Mm. Wow. B. There you go. So it's a D. Yeah. There you go. All right, so you know how we end this, guys. We always end it with uh, what was at the top. I'm going to trickle up for Chris a little bit. I'm going to say ranch is at the Let's top go. and at the bottom, ranch at the top. which was, I think that was blue cheese, which is no, garbage. As well. the, the bottom three was all Chris's S's. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, my God. So, guys, you guys remember, like, uh, Nintendo Powers, the mail You know, like, something very unique that used to be in them was mail promo shirts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All that good stuff. Promo items. Yeah, promo items. Something that I really want to talk about the audience that we all technically own is, like, some of the coolest stuff that we see in Nintendo Powers. And my question is, like, how hard do you think those are to find nowadays? 
I mean, it depends what you talk about. I mean, on one of our first episodes, we talked about one that was super obscure, and that was there was a mail away for a 1080 snowboard. And one showed up on eBay, and that's how we found out, like, oh, my gosh, where'd they get this 1080 snowboard? And Ricky and I were digging through Nintendo Powers recently, and we saw it in there, and we're like, oh, my gosh. I feel like that's one that I've only seen once, and it feels super obtainable, or up, not obtainable. Is that the word? Unobtainable? Is that yeah. the word? Unattainable. 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 Yeah. There we go. Thanks, boys. We're, we're good. <laughs> um, one of the best ones, though, that Ricky owns... And it's super unique is the full gore mask. Oh, the full gore mask. Yeah. But you got to tell them the story of how you found that and how we thought nothing of it. Oh, well, the cool thing is it's like it was the most random seller. He just had masks. It was around Halloween time. So we're just like, whatever. What is this? I walk over. He had like cool masks. He had a he had, for I think at first spotted. I don't even know what the heck. It was like Freddy Cougar. And then full gore was right next to him. I was like, yo, I never even seen, seen a full gore mask. From before. Killer Instinct. If anybody Killer doesn't know. Instinct, full gore. Dude, I grabbed it wanted it 10 bucks i we, we didn't know what it was I, I i was just i just picked it up because i thought it was cool little did we know i went home and researched yeah it. you're the one that researched it because you, you were doing the episode on it you're like ricky that mask like, i started yeah. googling it and i'm like ricky found this full gore mask blah, blah blah and i start researching and i'm just like i just see how obscure it is and i like only one has ever popped up in like a random picture that someone didn't want to sell and I'm like, what is this? And I just kept digging, kept digging. And it was a Nintendo Power, like, random prize thing. And I, like, zoomed into every detail, like, making sure Ricky's was that one, that it wasn't like, you know, a Halloween shop remade it. It was definitely yours. I and, think I think you showed me a picture. Does it look kind of like Predator-ish? Yeah, yeah. A little bit like it has that, threads, the, kind of with the, like, the mask in the front. Yeah. Orange hair. But stuff like that, so it's hard because you, there, what's the price, right? You don't Pick know. It up. You don't. A, a neop that's what my buddy calls it name your own price yeah it's like I there like is no let's just pretend if you had to throw it on based on our knowledge of rare things and all that and stuff, what would if you had to sell i know you're not selling it what would you throw it for on ebay the way things are going now probably like 3k 3k Ooh, 3k wow i mean but think i would about just it. throw it up because you know it's you ever seen, seen one? one yeah do you think it was is like a one of one do you think it was like a competition maybe it, it it was it was just he showed it to me it was just in the magazine you could buy oh, it you saw but, it in the magazine but no one yeah. like but they don't appear i mean i've i looked in detail like down every threat nothing no word of anyone ever owning one posting one anything just one picture one time by one guy and he wasn't selling it i uh i got something that was from a contest in the nintendo power it was a sweatshirt now did Sweet. you win it no i got it from the person though that oh. like the person that won in the contest do you still have it uh no, I sold it. Oh, I how much? Sold it. sold it for five hundred. What, what 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 was the shirt? Yeah, Extra we small. No, no. What was the shirt? It was Mario. It was like uh, it was a sweatshirt, and it was just Mario like standing like this, like with his arms crossed. And it was uh, the contest was out of I think five winners, and he was one of them. And he was like I think he said he was like fourteen or thirteen at the time. He was the winner. Yeah, he was the winner. One of the five. Wow. Winners. And awesome. uh, and he sold to me for like forty bucks. I was like. <laughs> you said it was, and, you said it was too, and you said it was too small for you? Yeah, it was too small for me. I didn't know they make shirts that yeah. small. <laughs> but wait, I, I make Blake try on a lot of the shirts that are extra small. Like, they won't even, like, get, I won't so be able to get my in, arm through. In one through. of the videos coming up on Pixel Game Squad, probably out by the time the video goes out, that we find that little tiny <laughs> shirt, and we're like, there is no way that this will fit Blake. Like, it looked like this. Like, the size of, like, half of your arm. And I'm like, Blake, try it on, and on the video, he puts it on, and it fits him like I'm a like, <laughs> I, I found one the other day that was this big and I was like, dude, you've got it. It was like <laughs> tiny and I was like, you've got it. What was that? I forget what it was. Something like random baby tea. I tried putting it over my head. He couldn't fit his head, but I'm, <laughs> I tried to find this. Like, Blake, how much do you weigh? Can we all guess? Yeah, take a guess. Let's hear it. 110. How tall are you? I'm 5'7". Five, 5'7". Seven. Five, seven. You're going to say 110? 110. 106. 42. <laughs> I'll say... I'll say you 120. I'm going to go 118. Oh. Right <laughs> I'm like 114, 115. I haven't, I've weighed the same since seventh grade. Can you gain uh, weight if you want to, or you just no. do you like no. stick to a diet or do you eat whatever you want? I eat whatever I want. Son of a gun. He also doesn't finish his food. Of he God. doesn't yeah. finish his food. That's why. I have a small stomach. I, I have to eat throughout the day constantly. I eat with him a lot and he'll just, well, he'll just halfway through just get, not even halfway yeah, he's through. Got like Sometimes a, a quarter, of the, a quarter of the way through. I got to take it home. This I had never seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, 
I we were at like the gas station. I was like, "You hungry?" He's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Let me get you. You want a banana?" And I was like, "I'm gonna get a banana." Give him the banana. We did something later on that day. Drop him off. There's a half a banana left in my car. I'm like. <laughs> You didn't finish your banana? <laughs> it's like, I got it's full, only this he big. Goes, he goes, no, I got full halfway through eating the banana. I was like, what? How did you get full halfway through a banana? Dude, that is not fair. I, I made this remark to him the other day while we were sitting outside of the uh, state. So I go, dude, you're like built like a hummingbird. Like that's literally him. I don't know, I don't know how to take that. Fast metabolism and is moving quick, but he's really it's small. constantly moving. Oh man, I, I think one of a, a fan recently sent me like an old CES magazine, and that's one of my favorite things to do is just go through those old magazines, old advertisements, and find the random giveaways, the random things that are for sale, the random things that you the especially the ones you've never seen. Because now I will say, now that we've been into collecting like odd and obscure, there is plenty of times where I see like we're going with the Nintendo Power, and I'm like, oh shoot. That's the one I own, or that's the one I've seen Blake wear. That's the one Ricky yeah, owns. Yeah. So it's always cool when you find that random item where mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I have never seen somebody have that before. Like somebody yeah. out there has it. Or it could have been like an unfulfilled. Did you ever mail anything away, anybody? I never did. No. Dude, I, I didn't did. even I don't even know how to fax, so I don't even know what mail <laughs> facts. is. Facts. <laughs> we had a we had a guy recently, he was on Retro Rick's video. Probably oh no, the video went out. Uh we we interviewed him, Rick did. And I'll probably get the story a little bit wrong, but basically it was during the Mountain Dew Xbox giveaway, which you guys know those are super expensive. You got to find like the right bottle caps or whatever it was. I'll probably get the story a little wrong, but he worked like either with someone that worked at a recycling center or someone that was next to a recycling center and they got them to give them all the bottle caps for that giveaway. Like everybody who was throwing away those Mountain Dews and they ended up having like, I think three or four guys yeah. from their thing won, won. Like they were the winners. So all those like winning bottle caps were right there in that area. And it was just crazy because I know those are super expensive now. Those are like, I don't know how much the Mountain Dew CIB go for. 15 to... They're yeah. pretty expensive. It just depends. Yeah, 1500 yeah. bucks or so. And not just like to play into like the, the promos that were put into magazines. And even like I was checking through an old PC game and it was a uh, CIB and all that stuff. So it was open. But like Beth Bethesda? Bethesda. Bethesda? I got a lispy. <laughs> that was rough. <laughs> Beth <laughs> Bethesda? <laughs> Yo, like in there, like uh, they had mailaways for specific shirts and hats and stuff like that like i wasn't even prepared to see something for like an rpg in there and i was like that shirt is probably so rare like an ultima shirt that didn't doesn't come up you know what i mean like who had pc games back in the day and then also thought to like hey let's send in for this and get that crazy shirt who spent the most money here on a on a like a random shirt or promo item it's got to be Chris. Probably me. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm thinking I'm pretty cheap and when it comes to stuff like that. How much? On a shirt? Yeah. I think the most I spent, I I haven't spent more than 900 So 900 is the most. I know most Rick spent shirt. eight on a Shaq Fu single stitch. I think he's paid more than that. Really? Yeah. He told he's me a little bit more than that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> he tried to play I it down. So. All right. Better question. What's the most you've ever spent on a gaming item to collect? Does it include like signs and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah. Yep. Anything. Gaming item. There's a stadium events just sitting right there. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> Does it include like arcade and pinball machines and stuff? Uh, I'd say you can give that to us also, but I'd rather also know with like a game. Let me think about it for a minute. Maybe Rick, do you know yours? Statues for sure. Those Mario statues I bought. That's the most of it. Yeah. What'd that. you pay? What was the most? Uh, yeah. I don't think he, yeah. He doesn't want to say. His but it wife, was, his it wife's was listening. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was multi thousand. It was more. Than, I'll tell you this. It, it was more than five k, for sure. Yes, for sure, more than five k. <laughs> Easy. I'm trying to think. But he left the Probably. he left the house spending more. <laughs> yeah, <he> did. <laughs> I don't think I've spent more than like, like even like, maybe three grand. Maybe like tw honestly, like the statue I bought off of you, twenty five hundred. I'm not that high. I haven't really gone crazy. You on a big big item. Uh, honestly, like uh, I can't really think of like a video game item, but mm. I've paid up for like. What? Let's hear it. Um, I've had two pairs of shoes that were extremely rare. I still have one of them, and one of them is gone. One of them is video game related, though, and it's Ooh. worth thousands and thousands of dollars. It's a. I had one of the 157 um, PlayStation 2 shoes okay. that were giving to their uh, executives back in the day. Wow. Um, I, got, I was able to get them for $200 off of this guy who was selling his like son's shoe collection and he, like not shoe collection but like his son's stuff and he had worked for Sony mm. and uh he had the shoes and I was like I bought them and I sold them for like 8 900 dollars 
worth around like 10, 11, 11 grand now. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You told me that's wow. Yeah. Get, wow. Got waxed. Yeah. I've actually never paid that much for a singular item. I, I very often pay a lot for things, but it's always like lots at a time. Same. Now that I think, like, about I'll it. easily be like, "Sure, you want to sell me that lot for eight grand, and it's worth I've, you know fifteen? I'll do it." Sure. Yeah, yeah. That, I paid yeah. a ton. Yeah, ten grand for lots, stuff totally. like that. That's why, like, maybe the like when I bought, you know, like when I bought the pinball machine, that Mar that Super Mario pin, that's six grand. That's a that's a oh, that's oh, a big man. one. Whoa. Yeah, but yeah. I feel like it was the Mario it, pinball. Yeah, the Mario pinball, but it's a big item. I find it hard to spend like that much on something small. You know, it's just like yeah. I get it. Yeah, we'll yeah. be there very soon, Ricky, with NES Pursuit. We're gonna, we're already getting some heavy ones, but there's going to be some heavy ones that come yeah. into play. You know what I find unique, but also like um, something that I probably wasn't here for, but you guys collect is some of the events had also promos for those shirts. The one that you brought in the other day, which you guys have two unique pieces of you have a star fox white sweatshirt and you have a star fox obscure gaming uh competitor sure. it was a wolco champion t super nintendo star fox shirt from wolco was a department yeah. store yeah and they had a like a random competition they're like i guarantee you that shirt's nowhere else no uh, you know I, I didn't think so either but i did see somebody else have one oh which then I'm like, dang, I don't. I thought maybe I had a one of one. As soon as you see <laughs> Only the second, I have I'm like, dang, jacket, dang no, yeah. I don't have the one of one anymore. And What's your Star Fox jacket? It's uh, the competition jacket. Yeah, but it's a white one. I've never seen a white one. I think it was like one of the yeah, per like I. person who like ran the event. Or Had to be like something like that because dude, you saw it. It's the same style as the black one, but it's white. It's it's like cotton. It's I'm trying to remember what it looks like now. I do remember seeing it. Yeah, we all have uh, one that I really like. It's like the Super Scope Demonstrator T-shirts. Oh yeah, good. I think it was made it maybe Australia. I heard somebody say I don't know, but it was basically we have these shirts that they were used back in the day for the time when they were people showing people how to demonstrate using the Super Scope. And I was like, it's just crap like that that that's like such a sub category within game collecting not only yeah. goes into gaming not only goes into shirts but it just goes into even like employee almost yep. you know so it's like a triple dip of i don't know what i think is super cool yeah. who has an nwc shirt in here me chris. No, you do chris he got a zillion. Oh, he does. oh i have one yep. ricky has one, have one. Have very weird do one. we have most of the market <laughs> i've never seen the one ricky has it says head to head is it the white one no oh. it says head to head it's gray uh, Single system has two. It's like the, is, the graphic yeah. is yeah. sick. It's two robots it's going face to face, and on the arm it says it. Nintendo World Championships. I, I mean, would I, say that we don't have the market, but I say that they're very. They don't five? come up very often. That's they really sure. don't. That's why I started buying 100. some of them. I display oh, them in my store. 500? Oh, and Rick got one of my NWC shirts. Yeah, oh, dang. Yeah. dang, get waxed on that one too for free. <laughs> Any lost welcome. Cut. You're welcome. Yeah, that was a whole other day. <laughs> you had never lost in my life. <laughs> that was the that same was actually day. A good day. That was a fun day. That was fun. Dang man, yeah. And I think what also is like very unique is Blake. You have a very uh, a, a extensive knowledge into clothing, and you go to Dusty for a lot of your clothes. Explain like some of the stuff that's like super rare. Like you know, like when you talked about um, like old wrestling shirts, I got hood stitched to them. Oh, and why that would be worth more. Okay, so like there's a thing called like an afterhood, right? Where like companies back in the day like had old stock sweatshirts in like the 20s, 30s, 40s, right? And they uh like they started like stitching hoods onto them and they would like come out like a little bit, right? And like uh people at like the docks were like wearing them cuz it's like super cold in the oh. morning. And so not a lot of those sweatshirts survived. Those are worth like thousands and thousands of dollars and dusty had found one in a storage unit right but someone chopped the left sleeve off of it no. so it only had the right sleeve <laughs> <laughs> this five thousand dollar hoodie is like just ruined now it's only worth like 15 1600 did he something. sell it yeah he sold it yeah. Wow. Yeah, and he found some like crazy Levi's that were like yeah, ten thousand dollars, seven thousand. Where would you say, just while we're on the topic of clothes, um, where would you say like the clothes market is right currently? Vintage T-shirts and stuff. So I will mm. always love clothes, but right now it is just declining. Uh, I am Vintage? slowly trying to get out of uh, clothes. I love media. It's uh, my margins are a lot better. Yeah. Um, I can get media for like a dollar or two and close at the pen to spend like $10 minimum on a shirt. You know what I mean? Do you think yeah. DVDs and that type of media will rise right now? I, I Phoenix Resell, I edit for him obviously, but in one of the videos I was editing, it's probably out. Um, he was talking about how there was like 
a lot of conversation about maybe DVD or media going back up because everyone's just getting reamed nowadays with all the millions of different services to pay to stream now. Mm -hmm. It started out with, hey, Netflix, you can watch all this now. Everyone has an account to Disney Plus, Hulu, Netflix, yeah. Paramount Plus, HBO. So a lot of the media I sell or try to sell mm -hmm. is something you're not going to find online. It is the only place to buy it would be on a DVD or to buy my VHS. All right, I got one for you to look yeah. out for me. I don't know if it exists. You probably guarantee you nobody in this room has heard of it. I used to watch a show when I was a little kid called Will Quack Quack. If they have a Never DVD of it. or if Never they have a VHS and any of you find it, I'll, I'll pay you handsomely. You. I'll buy it. I, I, I Googled it and it's just not out there in the ether. And it was a childhood staple for That's us. An, uh, one thing on VHS that sells really well is kids like shows yeah. back in the day that are impossible to find. And that is smart because, I mean, that's an easy way to, you know, guarantee that it's going to be desirable because you have something that people will want to go back to just like even the parking lot you were showing me old christian vhs tapes mm -hmm. and i said dude i'm actually super nostalgic for old salty the bible uh mcgee and me these were things i used bible man do you ever watch for uh, me it was veggie, veggie tales, tales. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Veggie, tales. veggie tales the little veggies are going yeah. around i still dude. think it's crazy how popular veggie tales got for being still christian super media popular. it's awesome but it's, I love it's Veggie Tales. For Larry, right? Larry was yeah, the main Larry. guy. But it's just crazy how big it got yeah. for being, you know, not a secular thing. I was always blown away by that as a kid. I was like, whoa, it's like mainstream. Yeah. But Veggie Tales is huge. Yeah. I've, but if you ever see any of those, man. I've had a director hit me up that because I was selling his movie. And he was like, I have, why do you have this? I, this was never released to the public. Is that the Spider-Man thing? No, it was called <laughs> Wasted <laughs> Apples. That? I just it. sold that one the other day. You yeah. sold Spider Man. I sold the Spider Man. You had a bootleg Spider Man movie. It, it was, was like a, a homemade, fan made, fan made thing. Yeah, how much? Like two hundred fifty. Two fifty. It's sold for two fifty. It's sold nice. for two fifty. When we hunt for media like DVDs and VHS, it's whatever the weirdest, strangest weirdest thing stuff. You can find. Like we'll look at a, you know, when you're out hunting, you'll see like thousands of DVDs, and you can just. What the heck is that? You know, and you just take yeah. shots on weird stuff. Yeah, like, I was watching an interview by Nardwar, and he was doing uh, Snoop Dogg. It's a really big throwback to him when he was doing the interview, but he was bringing a unique item to Snoop Dogg. It was one of his first movies he was in with a VHS. Yep. And Snoop Dogg goes, wait, I don't even own this. And he's like, where did you find it, right? That's how you know, like, media is so unique in that aspect. It's like, we didn't think to keep all that stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I honestly love when Nardwar goes out of his way. He'll bring up a vinyl that someone's never seen. or yeah. And he goes, like, the extra mile. With that being said, like, you doing that is actually saving things that may never come to light again. You know what he I mean? He was very appreciative that I had it. There you go. Yeah. He, uh, Did he, was he the one that bought it from you, too? Yeah, he was the one that bought it. Uh, no, it's, uh, he didn't buy it. He was like... Whenever you're willing to get rid of this for really cheap, let me know. Because I have it pretty hot. You're ready to wax it. <laughs> yeah. You want it back? Yeah. I had that happen with a, a surf video that I found oh. as well. Like we, a lot of times surf and skate videos tend yeah. to be worth more. Fulfill the dream shorties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like all, and a lot of them are like, some of them are like fan made and stuff like that. So I had one listed on eBay and then this guy hit me up and he was like, he inquired about it. And then he was like, oh, that's like me and my buddies. Like we were in a band and we've made that tape or something. And I was like, oh, sweet. And then it sold like the next day. And then I was like, oh, nice. He bought it. And then I get, I, we shipped it off. And then I thought I went to a good home. And then the guy messaged back. He's like, hey, did that DVD VHS sell? And I was like, you didn't buy it? You Why didn't did you buy it? that thing? He was like, you said how personal it was to you. But then so I was like, I guess there's somebody else that was into what you were, you know, whatever that little wow. thing was. But mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of that weird stuff that's like fan made. I found um, stuff. recently, you know, a, a locker full of Sid Haig's stuff, which is the guy from Devil's Rejects and all that, you know, is super popular. Yeah. Where that VHS yeah. came from, it was part of Sid Haig's uh, like locker. Yeah, so I got Sid Haig's, um, luckily it went to a fan of Sid Haig, bought it from me, but it was his like original AOL, like little media CD, like bootleg, like, hey, here's my reel of me. Like, I'm going to be an actor and a director someday. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's that really cool. awesome. That's pretty awesome. It yeah. was his reel that was made by like in home with like a s label printer, like Sid Haig demo reel, like crappy graphics. Someone bought it who was a huge Sid Haig fan. So that's yeah. I'm seeing. But like you How said, much? it went to a proper yeah. place. I'm still How hoarding much? his. I can't stuff. remember. <laughs> yeah. They all went pretty good though. I had I basically had a lot of Sid Higgs stuff and a lot of it. Yeah. But rightfully so, like you said, that is crazy, crazy lost media that you just only hope and praise gets into the right hands of because me, 
yes, it's awesome. I'm like, holy cow, I find this is crazy. But I'm not necessarily trying to collect Sid Haig, right? We're collecting yeah. NES games. That's you, my thing. Give me the rare NES. You got, you did get that cool. One of the coolest things is that had the help reels. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that was dope. That was sick. the one VHS that I'm collecting is like prophecy stuff and like and like UFO <laughs> stuff. I like wow. it. Yeah. Wow. On VHS? <laughs> yeah, on VHS. I don't know why, but I love it. It's I'm with so you. weird. Do you watch those? Yes, I do. You do? Watch I do. Those. They're so terrible. Really? They're terrible. Like, <laughs> oh my god, they're awesome though. Like, what's the best VHS player? Because you you have to know. You got what? How many? How many VHS? <sighs> oh gosh. What's your inventory? Best player. <laughs> I mean, I what do you have one. On? I just have a TV and just stick it in there. Oh, so oh you, nice! You just go. You go convenience. Yeah, nice. yeah I like yeah. it. Yeah. But CRTs, obviously. HDMI VHS players, if you can find them, they're hard to find. They're out Sold there. Sold him mine. Yeah, the, he. They, that's right. I did uh, get it. Yeah, from you. Sold yeah there's VHS cheap. players with HDMI out. Yo, and so you go for. Yeah, so if Let's you can see what find, go for. I'm still I think holding like 140, 150 bucks. I'm still. I'm still holding Sid Haig's like original TV contracts that he had from the 1960s when he was first getting into them. Oh, yeah. I'm like hoarding them. I don't know why, <laughs> but I think just like that, yeah. the interestingness of like keeping movie memorabilia. You know what I mean? It's Dude, like, I had. His, I mean, when I got his stuff, I mean, it was quite literally like his handwriting, signed documents of the streets he rented out, how much he paid, how much he was getting paid for his movies. His, I mean, his social security number was on there, everything. I mean, it was yeah. all of his stuff. So. I think the House of Dead one was, right? Yeah. Uh, that one was crazy. The one by Sega. That yeah, was I found a the House of Dead super unique. Play script. All gone? Sold? Yep. It's sold. Gone. Yeah. It's gone. But, but again, it went to the people who wanted it. Yeah, the people it who wanted it. Yeah, These people right. wanted right. it. They're like, oh my gosh, please. I collect this. I collect yeah. Sega. I collect this. So that's if you the, hadn't found it, it would have probably ended in the trash. Absolutely. So. And that's what I try to tell people. Same with you guys when you guys found, you know, the the Steve Bjork. The Steve Bjork, you know, developer stuff. We, people can hate all day and go, Oh, you're reselling that. That's crazy. Yep. That the community it would be in the trash. Twenty we, minutes away. If you weren't up at three I'm, in the morning finding it, if we weren't up at four in the morning finding it, it would be in the we trash. We were there on the last day for that, just <clears> to continue that story. And the, it was twenty minutes away, like Blake just said, from being thrown in the trash. Yep. When we came we back, we almost throw in the trash too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. We, we gotta yeah. think about all that stuff. Just like <clears throat> mailaways, the promos, all stuff gets like pretty much trashed at the end of the day. Yes, and us keeping it alive, it's kind of keeping our nostalgia alive. So yeah, and there's so much criticism of people be like, well, then you're not a real collector if you're selling. It. It's like I don't collect that. Yeah, it doesn't mean like I'm not a collector. Thing. But the people who want it, we have it. If no one would have had Sid Higgs demo reel on a Windows old thing if we didn't find it, plain yeah. and simply. Mm -hmm. True. True. So. All right, we're going to go on a cool topic. It's one of my favorites. It's the <clears throat> unpopular opinions. We have a little bit more time to do it. Um, you guys have some un unpopular opinion examples. Who do we want to start with? Oh, boy. I have a lot of unpopular opinions. I put mine on my uh, my notes pad here. Do you, you have one? No. no, no we're, time. All right, here we go. I, I, I have mine. Ready for my... Oh, which one do I want to say here? Oh, I know which one I'm going to start with. Let's see. Who, who is anybody in here a sports fan? Yes. You are? Yeah. This is what I wrote for myself. <laughs> <clears throat> Fantasy sport leagues are just as dorky or even dorkier than playing video games. I agree. Jocks get back. Think the 90s. You're going to be so Think in the 2000s. <laughs> nerds, it. right? Gamers, nerds, dorks. Excuse me, person who paints their body, wears a cheese head, has fake fantasy football leagues, sits and act like you have a draft in your home with all your friends. <laughs> you wear their clothes everywhere you go. Gamers, we wear our clothes too. You wear it every single place you go. You're wearing a sports hat, sports shirt. You are by definition LARPing. You are by definition live action role playing your sports leagues. I, I actually want to do that though. I, no, do, do I hate on it? Do I hate on it? Absolutely not. Awesome. Have your fun. Do your thing. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I but I don't the, disagree. Yeah, but and the I'm criticism. A big, I love sport. fantasy football. But, but that's what I'm saying is that the 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 distance between understanding that it's just as dorky, it's just as fantasy, it's just as make believe as what we're doing playing video games yeah. or even the people who LARP and all that and role play. It's the same exact thing. I don't hate on it. Do your thing. Have fun. Yeah. But I just it's just funny because the old typical, you know, Revenge of the Nerds, the classic Jeff nerds <laughs> yelling at the dorks when you're the exact same thing. I do love me some fantasy football. Dude, me yeah, nothing wrong with it. I won my championship it. this year. Let's go. I get yeah. into it. I love that. Nerdy but that's stuff. what I'm saying. I think I like it because it is like nerdy. I'm sitting there looking exactly. at numbers and stuff. So, I think when yeah. it goes too far is I when like the the last person has to do like something crazy, like get a tattoo or have to dress a certain way. And when they lose that league, I think that's a little too far for me. I, I wouldn't want to be in one of those. But dude, I used to do fantasy baseball and yeah. football all the time. And my brother asked me this year, and I was like, I don't got time. And and it's nerdy, <laughs> but that's okay. That's it's true. A, it's a it's a very weird thing to do. Yeah, Blake. Yeah. Ooh. I, I, 
You want No one's gonna like mine. Mine's pretty That's bad. Fine. It's called popular. popular yeah, opinions. yeah, we we love that. <laughs> Even if we don't agree, we'll just stare I, at you. I don't think <laughs> I don't think like original NES games are fun. I don't think Super Nintendo <laughs> games are fun. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I Wait, think so why boring. does he have to save this towards the end? Say that to Stadium Event's <laughs> face. <laughs> it's so Which is a horrible game. Horrible example. <laughs> horrible. Literally half the podcast has been about them wanting to collect a full yeah. <laughs> Why terrible. did you save this for the last topic of terrible. the last five minutes? Dump on the whole uh, I just got to dump on you guys. Yeah, that was. So you cool. don't think NES games are fun? I think they're terrible. Yo. Oh. We're going yeah. to we're gonna have I to think put it's just because I grew up with like. Like like actual like three D games that you know like the sixteen bit eight bit just doesn't do it for me. I, I that think, hurts. Yeah, th I think there is something to say about because your generation only growing up in three D world, you yeah. don't seem to understand platform. We don't like platformers. My son, who's almost in your generation, he's fourteen, so you guys are almost the same age. Mm -hmm. That's frightening. <laughs> yeah, my son is fourteen, <laughs> but if I put him in front of a platformer, his brain does not seem to be able to comprehend. Same with my son. Yeah, they're like, why aren't I in the 3D Roblox, Minecraft? Like, why or, can't I move completely like around yes. and stuff? Yeah, like, like I, you, I don't like that. The comprehension of just platforming does not. No. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, man, it's I'm glad you enjoyed your one yeah. and only yeah. podcast. <laughs> 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 We're going to put that one out so anything after that, like, he can go higher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Everybody will hate him. Like, we don't want Blake anymore. Oh, uh, he's only on the up from there. Well, you know, hey, it's an unpopular opinion, but I respect unpopular you giving opinion. it. Ricky? Go with Chris first. Christopher, <laughs> I, you know what? Leading into, we already talked about it. I was going to say how I I feel like Mario is not king of Nintendo anymore. I was going to say, and then we ended up talking about that. Um, another one that I had, uh, I actually l l most people hate on this, but I love new rap music. I listen to a lot of new age rap music. People hate on it all the time. I'm in the hate category. Yeah, I know people hate like on it. it. I love it. I, like I love it. like you like mumble rap. Yeah, I oh, do. Yes, worst. I do. I like like little Uzi Vert, Young Dolph. Little Uzi's awesome. I like. I'm a big like, fan of it. Those are all gag <laughs> reflex sounds. And I know to me. people are always like, "Oh, this new rap music, it's garbage," and like this and that. And I'm like, "I like it. I, I love it's it." Good. So I'd be vibing with it. I love yeah, Trippy Red. That was one of my first. Oh, Trippy Red is dude, awesome, dude. It was one of my one of my best concerts I've ever been to, dude. Trippy Red was it. it was, what are your thoughts on? What I these even got into like little little Peep and stuff. I know, yeah, I got into the emo then. stuff. I love emo. Dude. Little Uzi Vert. I know, I like yep. it. I Dude, rap, look at him win. Ra raps died in like 2000. <laughs> That's when it died. No, no. no. I just said it just good good No rap. See, no. I like it. Ricky, no. what, hey, no. let's be real. We're the darkest ones here. We got the most cred, bro, with that scene, bro. <laughs> no. so that stuff's trash. You whiteys enjoy your fake rap. <laughs> no, because no, I mean, if you think about it, like, it was just like when you compare like a Beastie Boys type style of rap, like that wasn't as good as it is now. Like if you listen to J. Cole right now and he's what lyrical. What did you just say? No, no, I I will say I'm not comparing that I like new rap better than old rap because I do like old rap. I like, <laughs> I like, <laughs> I like, I like I newer rap. <laughs> Chris I, is like, no, don't no, throw me in that no, 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 no. film. No. Don't put me in new <laughs> film. <laughs> yeah, no, I like newer rap. Like I'll listen to Lil Wayne. I'll listen to J. Cole. I'll listen to like... Uh, a Mac Miller before I'll put on like any. So when of that you start old... listening to music, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I don't actually. It's only on a certain vibe. My actual music is like seventies, eighties, uh, like soft pop rock, like that. It's so funny you say that. that's literally my playlist is seventies. No, 80s like soft when we're work, you know, when we're working on like the shed or like the podcast. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, what like, we put on. that's literally what we're putting on. I'm just like jamming. Like that's Blake my... looks like he should have been like in a seventies rock band <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I, like, I looked like the singer or the drummer. All of them mix. They had one mix. baby. I'm the whole band. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There is a strong stigma that people do not like new age rap, but it's yeah. like, yeah. you know, like it just I develops over it. time. Yeah. Most musicians would agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Growing up in the nineties, all you had to do is do like a couple notes and you were just, go you got to make a hit song right there. I mean, I love classic <laughs> Look at him, rock. He's so upset. I love classic rock, new Are wave. Are you a musician? Huh? No. Then get out of here. <laughs> <Not even close. laughs> you don't need mus musicians. Now you just go to a program. I'll, and give, you, I'll give you a month to even learn a Dave <laughs> Matthews song and you won't be able to. <laughs> what I've never wanted to do is just get stuck in my era. You know what I mean? I've, yeah. I've tried to always just appreciate like a lot of the new music. Yeah, yeah. Out. Some of it is garbage. I'm not saying I like all of it, but... I, I do listen to a lot of newer stuff, yeah. and I'm like, oh, this is pretty good. I didn't want to just get stuck in, I only listen yeah. to my 80s or my rock or whatever. No, know, so. no, I get what you're saying. Like, I listen to all music, but I'd like, Me too. I'll listen to certain music before I listen to others. Like, the only thing I'm not listening to is probably yodeling. Like, that's probably the only Yo, thing. Some, some yodeling's kind of sick. <laughs> you like country music? Yodeling. 
I can I can I can mess with some of it. Yeah, I like, like I don't mind it. Like I'll put it on. It's like you know, it's not casual. A bunch of country guy myself. I am not a huge yeah. I, old I, western. I can dig man. it when I'm driving like far. I like, like country I, music. Too? I like no, no, country. like like when I'm driving far. I, like yeah. I don't know. I I feel the vibes. I'm like oh, it's nice. I love it. it. You know what it makes me, it makes me feel like wholesome. I don't know what it is. Even if it's not wholesome, the word that's it's white people. Uh, right. Yeah. It's white people. <laughs> that's, rap. That's, it's always, white people. Rap. That's a weird yeah, comparison, rap. but that's, <laughs> that's kind of on point. Ricky, go ahead. What's yours? <laughs> it's not even that great. I'm sorry. I, I just don't like Taylor Swift. I'm sorry. Any of her stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's your unpopular Dude, opinion. I hate her. Yo, I can't wait I to title so this. He hates Taylor Swift. I mean. The Swifties I, are coming. I don't like it. I don't care if they come after me. Every song sounds the same. Right. She always. We're we gonna get canceled now. She's just. She, I get like, a song about us. I feel worry. like. <laughs> I feel like the music industry AI generated her just to be what they want, and no hate towards. You the think actual she's a? Person. I mean, she's she's. I guess she's good at what she does, but I just. I. You think not, she's an industry plant? Yes. Yeah. That's what I think. Like they I think wish Kevin I had Hart as much is? money as her. I wish I, I had that even money. if she wasn't an industry plant, sadly, you can see when the industry takes over. Right. That's any. Sadly, a lot of the female musicians or rappers, and you can see their early stuff, and then you see as soon as the industry realized, and all of a sudden their next al- album cover, you're like, "Whoa, what happened to this person?" That's not that's not them. That's not them. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, that that's just what happens with a lot of these people. And it's, Look what happened to Christina, Christina Aguilera? Same thing. All them. All of them. They all they went all from Mickey Mouse of, Club dude. to. Mickey Mouse clubbing. <laughs> it was much. funny because like I was in like a weird mood, but I was listening to like old like earlier two thousands R B R. R- Airbnb. B&B. Oh my god. R and B. R and B. I couldn't say Airbnb. it. Airbnb. Yo, we stayed here. Listen to this mumble rap. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even say. That's it. not words. <laughs> That's mumble rap, baby. But uh, yeah, no, like I was just listening to some like R and B. Can't even say it. Like some Alicia Keys, dude. I was just jamming. Yeah. I was like that. That was it. Like back in the day. She's a musician. I I, I liked what she was doing. She's 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 a very good musician. Curtis, do you have an unpopular one? Yeah, yeah. People who sleep with socks on should be banned. It's a banned offense. <laughs> I uh, should go to prison, <laughs> dude. You like prison? Agree. No, you should go to prison. I if you agree sleep with, with socks that. On. I don't know how you could do I, that. Don't, I don't even sleep with say socks you on. sleep with. Thank you. I'm waiting don't for Riff. No, no, I Riff sleep wears with no clothes. I sleep I with as minimal as possible. I mean, I like to be free as a bird when I sleep, if I possible. But just boxers, I, nude. I've worn boxers in a, probably a good 15 years. Uh, new, uh, like tidy whiteies, like briefs, like briefs. the yeah, yeah. Just picture it. That's bro. what I meant. Yeah. Tanned and oh, everything. Man, I <laughs> I got Another one image. that I had is um, I would say that mobile gamers are not true gamers. Ooh, uh, so uh, I don't know, man. Some of those mobile games are. I, I, that's my opinion. This guy dog. on TikTok hit some crazy, crazy tricks. Uh, Can you name them? No. <laughs> as much as I want to agree, I don't want to give hate. Like, is technically okay? Put it this way: Is Candy Crush a game? Yes. No, we want the. Do I res- like? Am I like you're a gamer? Not necessarily. What about but Fortnite on mobile. I I haven't even played Fortnite. I played it once <laughs> in my life, so I don't really know. Bro, the one game that I got into a lot was Temple Run. Oh yeah, I don't know if you guys Lord. ever played that for hours? Dude. And did you consider yourself a gamer? No, when you I just thought it was like I was just uh I was an industry plant to play it. I'm just kidding. No, but I just didn't think it was like anything crazy. All right, you know, I, are we? Done? We're almost no, there. No, I have another one. There. Oh, I was just gonna say, I got massively into Clash of Clans, like, and I had to. I just recently, like two weeks ago, got that. I I had to get it off of my phone. Mm. It started taking up so much of my time. Yep, <laughs> having that game in my pocket it's all a pay the to winner, <laughs> pay to winner <laughs> over <laughs> here. <laughs> was paid, and it was yeah. causing me a lot of money. Were you paying too. to win? Not necessarily, but uh, you know, when the bonuses would come out and stuff. I mean, I was buying <laughs> Blake saying yes. <laughs> That's pay to win. <laughs> If you're tacking on a few years along, it's a bit of play to win. I have one more. Okay, let's, yeah, let's, let's hear this let's, one. Let's, I think working for the rest of your life isn't a bad thing. I know a lot of people who hate on, hey, you know, stop working, you gotta retire. I will retire, for those listening audio, I will retire, air quotes. I will never stop hunting for games, doing, this. the reality is, we. I would say the majority of us in here are lucky, blessed enough that we like what we do. That's I cannot true. picture myself getting out of this, even though this is work, what we do, the <coughs> reselling, the clothing, the shirts, the games, the collecting, the, the conventions, all this stuff. This is what I want to do in my free time. Yeah, I have true. seen and been to places where when people retire and they do something they love and then they stop and I've seen them go plant themselves in front of the TV and just wither away. And then I feel like the people who are moving, grooving, doing what they want, doing what they like, those people have that longevity in them. I, I... 
don't plan on stopping. Yeah, working. I am with you a hundred percent on that. Nice. That is my mentality as well. Like I know a lot of guys that have retired early and then like literally don't. I'm like, what are you doing now? They're just like bored, not doing anything. Uh, I do believe in the idea that like work is part of your life. Yeah. Like yeah. if you have a career that you love, like I mean, if you're working at the, I don't know anybody that works at the post office. I don't want to knock anybody's. Yeah. Hey, my you're brother there, works at the post no, office. I don't, want to say, I don't know if it's a job. You're just using hey, an analogy, yeah, yeah. right? As an analogy, like you might. I, I could see you wanting to a job retire. That you punch in and punch out every day and just do your time. But uh, for me, I love what I do, and I'm the same way. I feel like I'll work until I can't work anymore. Like, yeah. it's it's so ingrained in what I do in my life, in my joy of life. Like, yeah, it makes me happy. So it's yeah. a part of it, and we get to bring our families in it too, as well. It's like we have to exclude them and go. It's like a part of the ecosystem of our family that yeah. I think it just would bring me joy till. Hopefully, I probably I'll probably live till. I think I'll outlive all of you in this room. <laughs> probably. probably will. Be. <laughs> yeah. to, 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 Who's going Blake, first? Yeah, Blake might be retired. I would probably go first. Curtis is but, going first. But like to add to that, so yeah, to die first, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <No. laughs> but like to add to that sentiment, my grandpa, born in 1937, man wow. is 85 years old. He is a general contractor, still working to this day, and he does it for fun. And I think the reason why he is as healthy and mm -hmm. as witty yep. and as as he's got sharp. that work ethic yeah. and sharp is because he's stayed doing what yep. he loves, you know, working with his hands. My wife's grandpa's the same way. He's probably around the same age, maybe even a little older. And man, he's he's a, he's a fisherman his whole life. And to this day, 85 years under cars, under boats, climbing on things, fixing things. I'm like, he just, he keeps going. Yeah. And you know what? To the people that do that, in my opinion, their their minds stay way sharper. If you're constantly using it, like when you sit down and plop in front of the TV. Like, yep. Yeah. Watching what, rerun what, the Price is Right and MASH. Isn't when do you think you'll retire, Blake? I don't... 30? 25? <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my, me, my grandpa, he retired when he was 39. Wow. <clears throat> Dang. He, uh, he lived his entire life just skiing. He uh, had a sailboat. He, used to, he won like, a lot of sails, uh, like a lot of like racing, like Got sailboat it. like things yeah. out in uh, Catalina. And uh, he... Uh, he retired super early. He just lived his whole life. Well, that skiing. makes a little more sense because he's in his thirties still. Like he yeah. still has a lot. Yeah, that's he, a lot. That's a lot. Go, versus <laughs> retiring at sixty-five or yeah. seventy, where you know, if yeah, it was he, like the nineteen hundreds. He 1900s. traveled the world. He did everything he wanted to do, and he lived till he was 94, 90, I think ninety-four. 94. No, that's wow. awesome. Yeah, did lived hey, an yeah. amazing life. Wait, wait, wow. can I get one more? Come yeah, on, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, All let's right. do it. This is for, you guys probably like this, but I don't. I hate. I, I only like paying with cash. I don't like doing Venmo and all that digital stuff. Oh, I love oh, Venmo. Oh, Ricky, the old soul. <laughs> the reason why is because I feel like money right now is not, it's like you, you have nothing. At least with the paper, I felt I like I saying. had something. And not only that, if someone freezes your assets, you can't do squat once everything goes digital. Gold, baby. Gold I don't know. Bars. That's just how I see it. I'm just gold bars. Got a stash of gold at your house. That's, that's I'm literally to what I'm house. doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I know what you're saying, and th and I agree with that. It's just hard that so much of everything is almost like you will own nothing. You know the meme: you own nothing. It's true. And it's like that is kind of where the current state is. Is it beneficial? Is it a little more risky? Of course, putting anything inside of a. If you get hacked. <laughs> trust everything. Trust me, when you own a business, there's multiple people that have their logins to all this stuff. And, and that's have your logins saying, like, to dude, all your stuff. It could Book be keepers, like accountants, all those people. Got all his logins. No, I know. So you're saying you have a huge stash of cash somewhere? That's what you're saying? We'll get you. Under the mattress. <laughs> <laughs> not in my house. Good excuse. I like it. Yeah. No, 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 not my house. No, no, no. Blake's house. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. If you guys, guys haven't got your tickets yet at SoCal, it's going to be June 8th and June 9th. And all the audio full episodes will be in our description. And I want to say, Blake, thanks for coming and coming and hanging yeah, with us. Thank you, guys. Blake. Thank you so much. This is great, guys. And uh, we ended on the good note. <laughs> <laughs>